Are we live? Yes, indeed. Okay, let's continue. Uh, so, as you can see, I spent just a few minutes uh, adding a few more things to this. Um, I'm fairly happy with the layout here. So we've got, uh, I think, all of our oil products now up to you know, where we were before. This one needs heavy oil and cosmic water. It's pretty easy. I don't know if I'm going to have, like, a bus for... thermofluid. Or... Or if we'll have a little... Well, yeah, the machines to make the machine to make thermofluid is huge, and it can go very fast. So we'll probably oh, only twenty per second. Hey, I am Sark. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, that's even more reason to have all of these. If we have multiple of these machines, we'll have them together somewhere. Um, and we'll pipe the regular thermofluid to where it needs to go. Um, we also need to make sure we never completely fill the storage for thermofluid because it does come out of at least one uh, recipe as kind of a byproduct. I wonder if I should do thermofluid here ish. Uh, what does it need again? It needs three physical items and two fluids. Well, it really doesn't matter where I put this. That's kind of the whole point of this uh, sushi bus. But on the other hand, I would kind of like to put most of the fluid things in the same place. Did I just run out of... Yeah, I did. Alright, let's go pick up some more, shall we? I wonder if I'm starting to run out... Nope, not really. Um, we do have... 30,000... Uh, space platform scaffold... Stored over here. Three-fifths of, of the way to a full rocket. To think we're getting fairly close to using up uh, 50,000, but it should only take like two or three launches to get way beyond the amount that I need for now, and then there'll always be another 50,000 waiting. Um, so what if, what if we do this here? And we're going to need some uh, cosmic water. I am going to put cosmic water in some of these pi uh, one of these pipes, but uh, the more things that we can have nice and close to the point of production, the better, I think. All right, so more than likely we'll do it like this. Maybe we'll do another pair of these just like we did with um, uh, with the gel, chemical gel. Okay, so this goes something like this. How many tiles is this? 10, 11. There's no way to do that nice and neat, I think. 
Although this is... No, that's perfect, actually. Alright. And then heavy oil. Um, I think the nearest heavy oil... We actually haven't connected nope. any heavy oil here. Hey, Mucky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You'll be streaming today, I'm guessing. Yep. Alright, I think I'll raid you today. Um, this is heavy oil here. None of these are... Oh, yes, never mind. I lied. Some of these are going to line up perfectly. Or at least one is, anyway. Except I kind of forgot the part where we need heavy oil over here as well. Um, I guess we could... Nope, that's a light oil output over there. What's the least spaghetti way to get heavy oil to these machines? We could maybe have it come over this way. Connect this heavy oil here. I don't really like that. Thank you, no worries. Uh, I don't think I'm going to like where I put this heavy oil no matter what I do. Oh well. That lines up very well. And then we kind of could do it this way. And then like this. Nope, we can't do a corner here. A baker staunch. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I do the lazy thing in space and use barrels and bots for everything that can use them. Um, that kind of takes some of the some of the fun out of the design, I think. Although sometimes I definitely get lazy, especially at towards the end of doing a main bus base. I start to bot everything. I feel like. Um, if they were going to add these long pipes, they may as well go one little step further and add... Uh, there's a mod that adds specifically corner pipes and T-intersection pipes and stuff so that you could have... And straight pipes so that you can have them all right next to each other. Because that would be very useful right here, obviously. Out of research? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Unfortunately, I can't sort it by research that doesn't require higher tier than Rocket Science Pack. But I think we've got at most one or two things left. But I think we... Oh, here it is. We've got uh, projectile damage and shooting speed, follower robot count, uh, artillery shooting speed... So it's really kind of because we can at this point. Wait, does that double it? It doubles it every time. I'm really not particularly concerned about how, how quickly artillery shoots, but damn. Um, I guess bullet damage and speed is not irrelevant by any stretch of the imagination. I don't suppose there's new uh, follower robots with SpaceX. Actually, to be fair, not everything that can 
use them, but most of the basics. Still some routing of some some of the fluids and gases. Yeah, you kind of have to in some places. Like, uh, I guess you'll often have like a little loop, like where you have to output this fluid as a byproduct of the the real thing you're trying to make here. I don't believe so, but they do have plans for a robot enemy faction. That's cool. That's very cool. Wait, so now... Now we're in the RimWorld universe, I guess. Now, if we were in the RimWorld universe, there'd be a lot more unwelcome visitors. I'm actually kind of upset that I can't do a corner here, because that would be... Wait a sec, can I... Oh, I can. Alright. That works. Yeah, that, that, that looks pretty good. And they're kind of symmetrical with the middle of this pipe. Alright, so this goes here. And then that's actually perfect range to connect this pipe like so. Alright, but then we need... Oh, that's one tile off. No, these things don't do the side inputs anyway. I guess we're not doing this nice, perfect, straight uh, bit of pipe here. But that's okay. Is what I'll tell myself. That's too long. I don't know why it jumps from 9 to 15. 3, 5, 7, 9, 15. No 11, no 13. It's not just jumping one distance, it's jumping two. Uh, could do it like this, I guess. And then a three. Hey, Evil Plot. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Lara High. There's also plans for medias to be shared between moon slash orbit of that moon and installations to protect both. That sounds like a good idea. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So that will connect to heavy oil. Fantastic. And cosmic water. Good. I'm pretty happy with that. So hypothetically, we'll have our fluid bus like this. Um, I do want to put water on it. We could make this one water. I don't suppose one of these is going to line up perfectly. That's okay. Let's make this a little bit more symmetrical, I guess. And gel is going to go here. That's fine, I guess. This is an even number. We need this to skip over here, though. Um, what if we move this over here? This over here? And then that's no good. We need a three. 
unless we want to use undergrounds. I think that's going to be a bit more unsightly. I think there aren't any buildings between 9 to 15 tiles that use fluids. Yeah, but we're still going to run into situations where an, an 11 or a 13 would look good. I mean, if you really want to be pedantic about that, we could go, you know, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. I, I wonder if there's a reason it has to be an odd number. I, I imagine not. All right, next one is thermal fluid. And I think we'll just connect all of those here. And uh, is nine the biggest one that doesn't have the side connection? Yeah. Hmm. That's not quite perfect. This is pretty good. And then... Over this way. That'll do. Fluid bus? Fluid bus. Yeah, I want to have... Absolutely everything accessible to any machine that we put near this uh, sushi bus. I'll design like a typical main bus base or something up here after I've beaten space exploration and I know all of the production chains. Okay, let's grab this stuff. And maybe I should start actually making some manufactories. We'll start by recreating uh, rocket science. Um, for that, we'll need to... Well, this is actually a good opportunity to test out and develop what we want to do with these uh, cargo landing pads, um, which is to say, hold on, this is water, max rate is 16 per second, we can do that on one side of the belt, which means we can fit a substation here, and that should be fine. not too unneat. That looks a little bit better as well, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, we want to place a signal transmitter. Maybe we'll put a couple of them here. These will be for... Oh, there's one thing I really don't like about this. If I connect these two, we're going to have a wire, like, all the way over here. But the way I've located this stuff, um, there's no room to put these on one side. This, this one I don't dislike so much. That doesn't look too bad. But having a wire go diagonally to the opposite side of this giant thing... I do not agree with aesthetically. We could have it go up this uh, substation right here. And we could put the... We could put a couple of transmitters up here. We'll connect a red wire for this one. And do the same thing on the other side. Should look pretty good. Are you going to connect the two sushi belts? Or else the space science will need to be belted up to the research. Uh, this is going to be the old base. 
Um, I'm, I'm sort of abandoning it. We're basically going to re recreate this only better. And then build on it. I want to save my wire. Because I've only got seven red wire on me. Alright. Do I need more? I've got one, two. I need four more of these. One, two, three. Whoops. Where is this going? Is this a copy-paste from... The old version it doesn't look like it. This would be heavy oil. Oh, the heavy oil. Okay, this is steam. Wait, have I not considered... Have I not considered the heavy oil input for these things? I hope we... I hope we're left with a good way to do it. It looks like we are. This one is already connected. This has an output, this has an input here. This has an output, this has an input here. Okay, cool. That's already done. Hey, Veldek. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well as well. And thank you for saying so. Alright, so that is our steam. Um, I think for the third one we'll just do it like that. Or fourth one, actually. Okay, so green wire is going to be here. Red wire is here. Uh, what did I name this? I think we'll just steal the name from this one. So this is called... Oh, it doesn't actually copy the name. Good to know. Uh, still, I would like to... Get rid of this name here. And... I'll probably go... Well, I was going to say I'll go remove that soon, but actually we've got tons of stuff there still. Um, this one we will name Novus Orbit Colon Water. It feels weird that Enter doesn't do anything and I have to click this. So I took a day off and I'm continuing my map. Nice. Enjoy your day off. Listen to podcast, hoping to get three hours of nap before going to work. But I gave up after an hour and I see you live. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry to be such a bad influence. Just kidding, sometimes you need a day off. Um, so that's Sushi Pad 1. I wish it would show the name when you just mouse over it. Sushi Pad 2. And I've named these the same as their landing pads. So this is going to be... Alvis, Orbit, Coal, and Water. And then... I don't even know what this one is going to be yet, so we'll just leave that for now. Uh, is there a tile between that? Yeah. Does it copy the name? It does. I guess that makes sense for transmitters. Okay, so down on Nelvis, we've already got our rocket that delivers coal and water, uh, coal and ice rather, but we want to automate the signals that we put in for how much we're requesting. I think, as far as I know, this rocket is going to be the one that we send most often. Like, we're going to need the most consistent bot activity to supply this one. Um, 
if we're going to leave it like that, we should probably belt the coal over as well. But for now, we'll just use the automated system that we've got in place. Um, so what we need is a receiver. Oh my goodness, that's big. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize how big this was going to be. Oh no. Um, I could move those belts, I guess. Or we could put this here for now. So we're going to connect a wire to here-ish. And I haven't quite figured out how we're going to do this. So just using this one up here as an example, we'll figure out some circuit logic. Uh, we need to say... Um, Pole divided by 50 and ice divided by 200 to figure out how many stacks. That's what she said. I hope it was something wholesome. Ice and pull. Uh, and it's going to be divided by 250. So this will tell us how many stacks we've got. Except we need to add one for the remainder, right? Because if we've got 51 coal, that's actually two stacks that are occupied. Um, so we'll do remainder. And then we'll connect all of these outputs together. Uh, so this should tell us how many stacks we've got. 257 plus 161 is 418. And it says we've got... Wait, what? Cargo is 228 out of 610, or is that how much space is available? No, it's 228. What am I missing here? Uh, hold on. So we've got 176 times 200. Uh, how much ice do we have? 81 stacks plus 1, it should be. Oh, this needs to be... Not the remainder. We need to say if this is not zero, output one. Can we do that just directly with the decider combinator? I think so. No, we can't. We need bloody two combinators here. Okay. Um, so this is remainder, remainder, uh, decider, if ice. Where, where is it? Oh, it's right near coal. If ice is greater than zero, output one ice. If coal is greater than zero, output one coal. Instead, we could say each greater than zero, output one each. And we'll connect those like so. So this is telling us we have one extra stack of each of these. So we have 82 stacks of ice and 145 stacks of coal. 82 plus 145, 227, 227. Fantastic. It was about big receiver. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So this poll right here tells us exactly how many stacks we've got of each. And if we do a... Uh, each times one... 
should have done a mathematical. H times one output S for stacks. 227 stacks. Fantastic. So that wasn't too difficult. We can take that number and subtract from 610. Minus S um, for how many are empty? 383. And we need to add about, we need to subtract about 30 inventory slots so that we don't waste um, cargo rocket sections, I believe unless they're stored in some magical place if you overfill it just because of the recycled cargo rocket sections, which I doubt. So instead of 610, we'll say... Uh, just to be really safe, we'll say 550. So that is 323 empty slots. If we're, if we're being super safe, and we want it to get to 500 before we launch a rocket here. The other thing we need to do is figure out how much we want to send of each resource. So, I think... I think we'll, uh, I was going to say we'll aim for even stacks, um, that'll make it sort of more generic and we can reuse this, but I, uh, we know we need way less ice than coal for this. Um, 100 steam is equal to 100 water, right? Yeah. So, and considering one ice makes 100 water... So this recipe requires one ice and ten coal. It's literally one to ten. We need ten times as much coal, even though ice stacks four times better. So... Ten to, two thousand coal. Uh, I missed a digit. We need... 40 to 1 in terms of stacks. That's kind of wild. Okay. Uh, 40 to 1 would be... Oh. Well, no. I almost said something silly there. Uh, what's 500 divided by 41? 12.2. Um, and that's where my brain ran out of steam. If we're filling a rocket with approximately a ratio of uh, 40 to 1 with stacks, and we've got 500 slots available, We can fit that just over 12 times. So, 12 slots of ice. Um, I'm just going to put this in a constant combinator for a moment. Prob we'll probably go like 13 ice. Uh, 12 stacks of ice, which means we have room for uh, 488 times 50 coal. Well, let's just say 488 stacks of coal, maybe. We either... I think we swap one stack of coal for one stack of ice, because the ice goes so much further. So, 13 stacks of ice and 487 stacks of coal. Um, 
I actually forgot though we can we can fit more than 600 we can fit more than 500 slots up here um uh, I could just no I was gonna say it would be easier if we just try to keep the stacks even. Except we would end up... We would end up sending up lots of coal. That'd be fine, wouldn't it? Like, as long as... Yeah, it shouldn't really matter. As long as the ratio that we aim for in here isn't too ridiculously... Uh, skewered. Um, so I guess what we're trying to say is leaving room for the uh, space capsule and more than enough room for the random cargo rocket sections that we get back. Um, if we say 550 stacks, which is really being kind of generous, I don't, it's like double what we realistically need. How improbable is it that we go over like 30 cargo rocket sections? The pod and the rocket parts take up slots, that's why it's 610. Yes indeed. Mass 420, welcome, welcome. Good to see you again, hope you're doing well. Um, I do feel like giving it 60 spare inventory slots is a bit overkill. Why don't we make this 580? So... Uh, so when we've got 580 slots free, we want to send up 500 stacks, and we want to aim for a specific ratio of water to, I uh, to coal. Actually, we might end up being able to make this, like, pretty generic for other things anyway. Um, because if we calculate based on that ratio, like, dynamically, then we'll be able to easily adapt it for other things. Um... Forty to one. So coal the target of coal stacks divided by forty equals the target of ice stacks. But how do we how do we actually plug that in? I think we'll have to make like an arbitrary manual calculation once to set each of these things up anyway, so maybe this dynamic uh, calculation is not necessary. Uh, so let's say we have 580 stacks. It's going to be 14. Uh, 14 times that 41 stacks. I guess we just look at the maximum of coal that we want, minus uh, something to figure out what was uh, minus what we've got to figure out what we want to send up, and same thing for ice. Um, so 14 times, we'll just call it 14, uh, 14 times 40 stacks is 560. So 560 minus 
stacks of coal output uh, output coal, I guess. So this is how many stacks we've already got. So we want another 416 stacks. I think we're getting somewhere. Uh, and we'll do the same thing for ice. 14 minus number of stacks of ice that we already have. Um, it seems like currently we've already got way more ice than we need. So the next rocket would not send up ice. What? Why is it a negative? Oh, right. Okay. Um, we don't need to do anything about that because request to chests or filter inserters for that matter, if you feed them a negative, will not uh, do anything. But if we did have to do something about it, we, sh we could just say each greater than zero output each input count. So our next rocket would be 416 stacks of coal, no stacks of ice, um, that's leaving uh, 84 stacks empty, though. So how do we decide what to do with the remainder? We could do like a one-to-one -one ratio, I guess. In this case, we would need... Um, to get rid of this negative. The pod and the rocket parts, oh yeah. I personally would just calculate with a total of 500 stacks available in the landing pad, so you don't have to readjust it later, but I'm lazy like that. Um, we are leaving uh, 30 stacks empty for, um, for the space capsule and the cargo rocket sections. It's really kind of, as long as we don't run out of room, it's kind of arbitrary uh, what limit we set here. If this thing could hold a million, we would be setting it at like a million minus 30 or a million minus 50 or something. And yeah, we can definitely adjust it like pretty easily. So, starting to run out of space here, but this is fine. So, if we'll say if this, hmm, if this is less than five hundred, uh. There's n I really wish there was a special signal here that sort of combined everything. Like, we could just call it total, um, because it often adds one more combinator that you have to add here. Um, everything and each will not, like, add them all together. It'll perform calculations separately for each input. Uh, same goes for anything. So I guess we're going to have, we could do each greater than zero output number of stacks uh, right here. But we'll probably end up needing another combinator to hold on to this zero and 417, maybe. Um... If this is less than 500, then, then what? How do we programmatically say, just keep adding stuff to it until it's full?
if actually if we were to keep adding stuff at a one-to-one -one ratio um if this happens we're just going to end up with way too much ice eventually since we consume coal way faster stack wise um i really well not just stack wise but stack wise most importantly i really want it to fill out with coal so i guess that makes it simple then um, if S is less than 500, output coal times 500. But how... Uh... How do we take either these inputs or this input, depending on what's going on? If we just connect this and this to something, if it's greater than 500, Oh, I think that's actually really easy. Um, maybe. We just have to limit it to 500, right? If each is greater than 500... Uh, I really wish this output thing would let us do, the more, do more than just input count or one. Because if we could set this to 500, it would make it much simpler. Um, as it is... So let's just check something here. Um, if, if S were 500, we would not be outputting 500 coal here, so we would just take this stuff. Um, but if this is 500, then... Wait, is this zero? It doesn't output S. Wait, yes it does. 14 minus water ice. Why is it outputting 14? Oh, 14, right, okay. So that... 560 minus coal. Uh, unfortunately, our null values are a bit weird here. It'll... Th if there's nothing... It'll think there's 574 stacks, and then it won't do the call. It'll, it'll go for 14 ice and 560 call. Which is impossible. And if our system loads up, well, we can test it right now. Um, 14, 560. I'll switch this constant combinator off. Oh, it needs to be 14 times 200 and 560 times 50. Uh, ice. 2800 and 10 times as much coal. Okay. So we'll turn that on and we'll see which one it's coal. I was afraid of that. So this system requests one item at a time. Um Let's turn that off. Which means we're going to be trying to overfill the cargo rocket here. Hmm. I could just have like a constant combinator. No, that's not going to do it. 
This is uh, getting trickier than expected. For now, let's just suppose that we've got some stuff. 417 coal, negative ice, output S. Uh, 417 stacks, that's correct. If we're not trying to completely fill a rocket, I think I have a better idea. Um, five hundred. Okay. If coal equals S. If coal equals S, then change coal to 500. This is really kind of specific, though. It's going to be hard to translate into other things. But it's a step on the way to figuring out these systems. Um... If, if coal is everything that we're trying to put into the rocket, then output 500 coal. And how do I take this green wire as an input if this is not true? If coal is less than 500, uh, output everything, input count. Except that's going to be, so that's going to be 500 plus 490, uh, 417. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh-oh. Correction, we've got a loop. Uh, this should be a red wire right here. Because that was going up here, it was going around here. Okay. If coal is less than 500, output everything. Coal is not less than 500, so it's not outputting anything. And what if it were the case that So we could just use uh, these two. Wherever this is going to go, we could connect this and this. Both of these outputs will go to something. So both of these can't be true. We're either getting 500 coal in a rocket, 500 stacks of coal, or we're outputting everything from up here. Um, if we connect this to a constant combinator and pretend, uh, pretend we're doing a normal rocket, for example. Well, no, this is supposed to be how many stacks we've already got. Um, just gonna copy that for now, and we'll say we're asking for five stacks of ice and four ninety-five stacks of coal. Why is if coal is less than five hundred output everything input count? Wait, did I miss something? Where are we usually at on this wire? 
this is how many we've actually got already. Okay, so our target is... This is a little confusing. We've, we've got 143 plus 82. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, let's say we've only got one stack of each right now. So we would be trying to send... 559 stacks... plus 13. Should probably... Didn't think you would be streaming? Why not? Halo and Shadow, welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. I don't know. Okay. Uh, what do we do if our requested stacks is greater than 500? We need to keep as close as possible to the ratio of these two but reduce it to a total of 500. Hmm. I just figured since you've streamed like three days in a row, uh, normally, unless I have some commitment coming up, I'll do six days a week. But also I get it. No worries. Bonk. Bonk again. Okie dokie. Uh, my brain is getting tired of this and I'm starting to get confused. Maybe I should take a break and do something simpler and come back to this. Um, but on the other hand, I would really like to get this fully automated being supplied from Nalvis. Yes, agreed. Okie dokie. Um... Maybe we should just allow it to empty before we send another rocket. That would... Well, it won't empty because the ratio of consumption is not going to be the same. So then we're back to this problem again, but slightly different. Royal PSTK, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good morning to you as well. Um... How do I cut down... Oh, this is going to take so many combinators. It looks like, surprisingly, a lot of combinators. I feel like I'm overlooking something simple. This part is all correct and pretty straightforward. Um, we divide by the stack size, we get the remainder for one more, and we know how many stacks of each resource we've already got in our rocket, uh, in our cargo landing pad. Um, we know how to calculate to see if we've got 500, uh, empty slots available. Actually, I should change that a little bit. This is 610. So we'll just do that faithfully. And then we'll wait until we have, like, more than 500e here. 500 empty slots. It will keep ratio I consume at orbit. I'm about to implement this system. I'll set up amount x in buffer in orbit. I'll subtract that from actual state. And signal to Nalvis. Amount X in buffer in orbit. Subtract from that actual state. Send to Nalvis. On Nalvis I'll subtract what I already have in rocket. Insert it for that resource will enable only if I get a positive signal. We'll keep ratio I consume at orbit. 
don't need to map that ratio. It's foolproof for unexpected changes. I'm not sure if I understand. Although it's definitely valid to do some of the math up here and some of the math downstairs. We could, for example, calculate how many stacks of something we want sent. Well, not just stacks. We could convert it back to um, actual numbers. Um, in fact, if there's 30 coal here, we could ask for another 20. No, we can't. That was silly. No, that was... Ignore that part. Um, because it's how many stacks actually fit in the rocket that matters. So we need to, we do need to think in terms of stacks. We, but yeah, we could do the calculation up here or downstairs. In orbit constant combinator, for example, coal equals 20k. Subtract what I have in orbit and send to Nalvis. Um, you'll be sending rockets with empty cargo, right? Empty cargo slots? Yeah, I want to I want to completely fill a rocket every time I send one. So the last hurdle is What if we just What if we just allow more empty space in here and Aim for 500 stacks. We'll do like 12 to 1. Well, I mean, we'll do 12 times 41. And maybe coal for the remainder. So... It'd be way too easy to send a rocket of one resource or the other when this gets empty on one resource. Also, there's not enough storage space for that. Also, also, it gets us nowhere in figuring out how to send a rocket full of lots of different resources. We'll send when all slots are full, not necessarily full stacks in each slot. Now this has subtract all coal and already landed into rocket. Send it into inserter if call is positive. Hmm. Um. So I guess this should be five hundred. Make it 12. 12 minus that. Uh, 488 minus coal. So we would be asking for... 11... Hmm... This is actually really hard. Uh, 488 stacks of coal minus whatever we've already got. 12 stacks of ice minus what all, whatever we've already got. 487 plus 11 is not 500. Um, and what if we fill the remainder with coal? That's going to end up giving us too much coal. We could make the remainder ice. So, that we could probably simplify all this. I also plan to use multiple different rockets. One for science and make on Nervous. 
other rocket launch uh, with ingredients need to make more science and space. I'll supply those rockets by belt. Each ingredient has its own supply belt, no dynamic filters. Yeah, it gets really simple if we just have a single landing pad for each resource. So that wouldn't be very fancy. I think I have it. Um, so this is the number of stacks. Uh, we will output these two to tell us what we're going to put in the rocket. And then we'll put... Uh, forget this, I think. If S is less than 500... Then output. Once again, I really wish we could put a whole condition on the output, like a mathematical combinator. Uh, it would just save us one combinator very often. Output ice times 500 minus s. If s is less than 5. I think we can do this in one combinator, actually, because 500 minus S output ice. As long as this is never going to go over 500, which it shouldn't. If we have nothing, it outputs 500. If we have some resources, it outputs less than 500. And then we say 500 minus S output water ice. Which is 2. Um, I'm just trying to think how we avoid, oh, easy, we can just, yeah, E has to be, if E is greater than or equal to 500, uh, make it 530, output green signal, that's going to be what launches our rocket. Although, we'll probably have some other conditions in the way before it actually launches. So, we add all of this stuff up. Uh, probably on a red wire. And we've got exactly 500 stacks. No matter how much of each resource we already have. Uh, that's not good. Okay. Now we're back to the same problem of... Well, we should never end up with this ratio, though. Let's say we've got like 14 stacks of this and 480 stacks of this. That would be 490 and 8. What if we've got uh, almost no ice left, plenty of coal? That would be 492 and 8. This would end up loading the rocket. Um, and taking stuff out of it all the time. If we're changing the requests based on this. Um, until it's time to launch a rocket. 
I'll land science pack right next to labs, ingredients, down pad near start of the main bus, and third landing pad for other items, personal transport. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how you would get by with just one cargo landing pad. Um, what we're going for is a couple of resources in this one, uh, various resources in these two, and we'll probably have some other landing pads for some other high throughput items. Like, maybe we'll have, like, iron, copper, steel, and stone brick in this one, for example. Um, maybe we should just have, instead of a target ratio, just a flat target for how many stacks of each. So, if we're going for 650 stacks, which is pretty generous, we, uh, 550, rather, we could do, like, 580. Um, 580 over 41 is 14. I think this is what I was programming in before. 14 minus this. Uh, Forty times fifty. Ah, uh, this is confusing. Okay. Five hundred and eighty stacks divided by forty-one. If it's 14 and a bit times. So we want that 40 to 1 ratio 14 times. So yeah, this is right. 14 ice. Um, oh, we should just put this part through it, each greater than zero output each. That'll, that should fix it. Okay. Um, uh, 14 times 40, 560, that should do. Okay, so we'll do each greater than zero output each input count, and then... Well, we'll still. If we change the way we do this one, we'll still need like the same number of combinators. Okay, so this is eighty and thirteen. That doesn't change anything. But if we've got uh, more ice than we normally would want, we're outputting negative sixteen ice here. Turn it into zero. Uh, we're looking for eighty stacks of coal. Hmm. 80 stacks of coal. If we make room, let's say we've got 30 stacks of each. Now we're looking at 530 stacks of coal. Maybe reduce both of these to like 20. That's... Oh, that's still greater than 14. What if we only have 10 stacks of each? Then we're going to request 550 coal and 4 ice. That's not what we're looking for. What if we just prioritize ice and then fill the rest up with coal? That's, um, that's good enough for two resources, but we're going to really struggle when we're trying to figure out how to how to do lots of resources, but for now I think it's okay. I would like to get this one working. It'll also probably take fewer combinators, so I'd like to have that version as well. 
So, in that case, all we have to do is figure out how many stacks of ice we want. Um, we don't need to know how many stacks of coal we actually have here. We just need to know uh, how many empty slots we have, although this is part of that calculation, so we'll leave that in place. Um, we probably don't need this combinator at all. And then... That would actually be a pretty easy way to do all of the other resources as well. We just have a target for each resource and then fill the remainder with the most high throughput thing. That should be fine. Okay. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. Um, probably end up reusing some of this logic, for, but for now I'm going to sort of tear it up to, like, declutter my brain. So our target is 14 ice. Uh, we then say... Only send that through if it's positive. Um... Ice. Since this signal is only going to be ice, just for clarity, we'll not use each here. Um, and then we say arithmetic combinator uh, 500 minus ice. Output coal. And I think we're getting close. So let's assume we have nothing for now. We'll connect this up after we're done. Uh, that's not right. Because that could receive a negative. Uh, we'll do the red one over here, just for sort of readability reasons. So then that would go here. So we're going to send up a rocket with 486 stacks of coal, 14 of ice. Uh, if we were to send a rocket now, it would be all coal. That's actually pretty good. And then... We're not going to send a rocket until E is greater than or equal to uh, like 5.30. Very similar to my solution. I just don't fill remainder with the most needed resource. I put resources in until rocket has zero empty slots. Uh, but what resources are you putting in that fill it up, fill it out if you're doing a specific target for each resource? Okay. I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Um, let's... Let's figure out exactly how we're going to tidy up and miniaturize this. So I'm pretty sure we'll need all of these combinators. This is the number of water ice stacks, including the partially filled stacks. Um, these two go directly to the output. These two go each greater than zero, output one each so that we convert the remainder into just one. That's all correct. That's not getting any smaller. Um, after that... Uh, over here we have... Not actually... Uh, over here we have the number of stacks of stuff that we've got, and 
This is how many empty slots there are in the cargo landing pad. We take... Oops. We take our result and subtract the number of stacks of ice we've got from a target of 14. And then if that's a positive number, uh, 500 minus uh, water ice. Let's uh, use a constant combinator and pretend that we've got nothing but too much ice. So that's going to be... Wait, what? 30? Oh, that's not 30 stacks. That's 30 ice. So let's say two, uh, 4,000 ice. It comes out to 20 stacks. That spits out a negative number. We don't want to bother with a negative number. 500 minus 0. And we're doing 500 stacks of coal. That's good. If we have... Uh, four stacks of ice. We're just going to send ten ice and four on any coal. Perfect. Okay, so this is going to go over here. Um, this needs to connect like this. Oops. I feel like we could probably tighten this up a bit. That should be better. And that is tidier as well. Uh, let's do a remainder here. 790. Remainder is... Uh, 190. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So it comes out to be one more stack. And we get a total of uh, four stacks. Yep, that's good. It might happen that I will need only one silo for all other ingredients, but I might need more rockets. We'll see about that as I go. Yeah, there's a lot of little details that um, that appear unexpectedly when you figure out stuff like this. Um, so we could do all of that logic up here, and I think I will. How would this look? It's not the worst. We'll need a, uh, another substation, but that's okay. Should we put the combinators over here? And instead of connecting that there, we'll connect it here. So what we're going to send to what we're going to send down from orbit is number of stacks of coal that we want, number of stacks of ice that we want, and uh, how empty is our cargo rocket silo. I do wish I could have made it a bit more compact somehow. I guess... Well... I mean, I'm sure I can make it a bit more compact, but the the layout of the logic is going to be all messed up if I do that. But there's room for one, two, three, four, five combinators here. We could, like, squeeze these ones up here, but that's just gross.
Well, is it less gross than having like a weird unshapely set of combinators sticking out everywhere? I think this is actually better. Still not too hard to follow what's going on. That could maybe go over this way. Ugh. That's kind of worse. Yeah, that's hideous. What did I do? Swap these around? I can live with that. As long as I never look at it again. Oh no, I should hurry up. I only have 24 defense ammo left in orbit. Ruh -roh. Okay. Novice Orbit Call and Water is currently requesting 14 stacks of ice. Um... 14 stacks of ice, 486 stacks of coal, and 610. It has 610 empty slots. I could also do the math here to convert this back to uh, the actual amount of coal and ice that we want to send, but I think I would rather do that on the ground. Okay, can we do it remotely? Oh my lord, that is a huge signal receiver. Um, considering... Considering I probably ha want to have one of these next to each rocket, um, I kind of wish I'd left more room. Maybe we'll remake uh, another one of these sorts of areas later on. It'll mostly be a copy-paste and then just... Uh, copy-paste and then just uh, shuffle things around a bit. But for now, oh, that is hideous. Um, I need to add some combinators here. I think I might just go back. Since we're going to send some resources up in this rocket anyway. Um, can I make an electric boiler while I'm here? Yes, good. Uh, there are a couple of things I want to do downstairs, like get more red wire. Alright, before we go, let's make... I think we already have made a bunch of... Space Manufactories? Apparently not. Need some... LDS heat shielding and big electric motors. Big electric motors. Apparently it didn't bring enough LDS. Yoink. And yoink. And only fit one at a time. Let's uh, give it a hand, shall we? Alright. So I need a whole bunch of these, actually. And I need one, two, three, four, five, six biochemical facilities, at least. I think we have a few of those in a chest. And now that I think about it, maybe we also had some space manufactories lying around. But, oh well. There's obviously nothing in there. Um, I'm not seeing any biochemical facilities. Maybe up here? Nope. Was that? Oh, that was a cannon. Alright, we'll make some more. 
How do I make biochemical facility? It's made in space manufacturing. Wait, what? I thought I had some. I could have sworn I just picked up a few space manufactories. Where did... Where did they go? Did... Did I trash them? I did... I did not. This is zero to infinity. Um... So, what happened to them? I know I made at least one. Oh, wait, do they get placed here? I am a dub. Okay. We need more LDS and big electric motors. Give to me the space manufacturing. And we need biochemical facility. Uh, requires pumps and chemical plants. Glass, LDS, and big electric motors. Where's the glass? Do we have any? We do. So, where is it? There it is. I've already run out of glass. Um... I forget... Oh, yep, there it is. I was gonna say... I thought we had the cannon sending us glass. It's only going to send one stack at a time. Alright, let's go place... Well, how many? One, two, three, four... Uh, we also need a decontamination facility, but one, one, two, three, four, five, six chemical plants are needed. I say chemical plant, but... I mean biochemical facility, the giant chemical plant. What are we missing now? Regular chemical plant. And LDS. This is, uh... Oh no. That's probably not that bad, but I just kind of overfilled my inventory. Okay, glass. How many do we have now? Five. I think we need six. Or seven. No, we need six and then one space manufacturing. Where's our glass? Here it comes. Yoink. Oh. We need... Wait, we need a hundred? Really? That's a bit expensive. Alright. We'll wait for the next one. Here it comes. Or not. There we go. Oop. Only got 92 again. Alright, but that is all of the biochemical facilities we need. Um, we also need a... Decontamination facility, 
which for some reason requires a vulcanite block. Cannot be made by hand. Okay. Where is everything? There we go. Okay. Give to me the decontamination facility. I'm kind of excited to switch this whole thing on. By which I mean set up the automatic resupply once we give this stuff some power uh, I guess substations through here would be appropriate that is a little untidy but I can live with it Okay, uh, let's head back, and I think, let's take uh, some flat solar panels downstairs. We could definitely benefit from some OP solar. Bonk? Am I forgetting something? Nope. Okie dokie. Alright, let's take our uh, space capsule. Did I already change the name of this one? Yes, good. Just random bunk, I see. Off we go. And power armor on. Wait, what? why is it not fully recharged? Does it not recharge while I don't have it on? Okay, uh, this can all go into storage for the moment. Uh, I did not mean to bring a bunch of space belt back with me. I'll keep that in my inventory. Probably should do the same for space pipe as well. Oh, and I should turn this on. Whoops. Uh, okay. The science rocket is completely resupplied. That's cool. We're at 43,000 uh, space scaffolding. Okay. Time to configure this thing. I think the next one of these we build will build inside a rail block. Okay, so we're receiving nothing actually. There we go. Number of empty number of stacks of coal, and number of stacks of ice. We need to... Uh, if we're going to set the launch to be automatic... Oh, that's cool. It's got some built-in... And conditions. That's fantastic. Uh, Renal, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Launch on green signal when... When cargo full. I think that's what we want.
Yeah, I'm sure that's what we want. So then all we have to do is... Um, I'll just bring this... Uh, we'll bring this wire down here. Thank you, bots. Oh, that's not connected. Okay, never mind. We'll do it like this. Green wire goes here. Get rid of this one. Um, arithmetic combinator. Coal times 50. Output coal. Ice times 200. Output ice. Connect like so. And then this goes to our request system. I'll just leave that there for now. So we are indeed requesting coal. And then... Uh, can we just, can we just connect the green wire directly to this? Is that okay? I don't think so. No, that's going to be terrible. All right. So the red wire isn't being used. That's perfect. Uh, let's connect it like so. And we have a decider. Launch on green signal when card be full. I was just looking at what the other options were there. So it has to be a green signal if we're going to use a circuit condition. Uh, and our condition is... Wait, this is connected wrong. Oh, that would have probably messed something up. Well, it would have just meant that we're requesting way fewer... Um, coal and ice. Okay. Uh, green signal on the red wire. Uh, we'll get rid of that until we're ready. Number of empty slots has to be greater than or equal to... Uh, let's say 530. Green signal. Cool. That should be it. That should be completely automated uh, supplying of ice and coal to turn into uh, fluids and run this entire thing. We will need just a tiny bit of heavy oil to get this thing started. Obviously we have that. That's not going to be a problem. Um, I'll just put that there for the moment. And now we just wait for it to fill up. I did set up a system to limit the number of bot requests. Uh, so we're only requesting like a bit over a hundred items at a time over here. So we don't just have thousands of bots in, in motion when we're requesting 24k call. So it's going to take a little while to fill up. Um, I don't really want to miss it, so how about, I, I, I want to ride the rocket when it launches automatically, so we'll say, uh, if E is greater than some amount, set a siren. I will need alert sounds to be active though, and I think... 
we're going to be constantly hearing about destroyed items from our item destruction system. So we might have to turn that off anyway. Seems to be going pretty well though. I was about to say I wonder why copper looks so sparse, but it was just because it ran out. Oh, also because it's splitting from two belts into four. Look at that little wave pattern of uh, stone and then copper. It's kind of hypnotic. All right. Um, if E is greater than 500? Wait, what? Oh, it's already at 610. I am a dup. Because that one's empty, that's why. Um, maybe... Maybe we should set this alarm somewhere else. Uh, we're receiving the E signal from this green wire. Uh, if E is less than 10 stacks. Oh, and make sure it's global. There we go. And there's that warning. Wait, do we only get the warnings if the biters are killing our stuff? Three seventy-five more followers till one K? Hog. I came back because I heard beeping what's exploding. Uh nothing at the moment, unless you count these chests that are exploding on schedule. Um why have the bots stopped here? Oh, those are actually full chests. Okay, cool. Kaboom. Uh, we did get a few biters attacking, but really I was just playing with this um, programmable speaker so that we're going to know when uh, this rocket is about to launch automatically. Wasn't not once. I said I came back because I was listening, but I wasn't watching because I was playing Factorio myself. That's valid. Yeah, I'm just listening most of the time if I have a stream. Uh, well, it depends on the stream. If it's something like Factorio, I'll be listening a lot of the time. Uh, if I'm watching Rocket League, I'm watching Rocket League. I'm not... Uh, I'm not tuning into a Rocket League stream for the announcers. Not that I'm saying they're bad or anything. I feel like... Oh. Oh, that's just the fuel management system. I yeah, know, this is good. If you see Steam, you know it's, you know it's working. Uh, I do want to see how good those solar panels are down here. I think we already did that, though. Yeah, here's one. Um, maximum of 400 kilowatts. That's pretty good. So that is... Almost seven times one of these. That's really good. We should make a blueprint with these in them. Let's grab some. Although, I just realized I don't know where they went. Um, I kind of want to keep solar panels here now. Uh, the big ones. And... How 
about we just make some room? I don't know what they stack to. Apparently it's 20. So this will be 10 stacks of each of these and uh, 25, 35, 45. That's, that fits. That's actually a really good fit. I should just set this to the same settings as this inserter right here. Only whitelist. So everything that's appearing on this filter inserter we're trying to get rid of. Oh, and there's our regular being under attack alarms as expected. Maybe it would be good to design a new wall system that has artillery built in. Then we could then we could do the ultimate turret creep. I would also like to design a new wall system that implements what all the cool kids are doing now with uh, instead of having one big roboport network. Uh, and it has a bunch of separate roboports and some chests for transferring items between them. Okay, that should be enough of these to design something. So we have a few things to do while we're on the ground. Um, I think I would like to try building something the exact same size as this, if possible. Of course I'm skeptical on how possible that's going to be. Okay, so far so good. In fact, it might be a lot easier because these things are, it, it will be a lot easier to make a nice design or 10, um, because these things are just four times the size of, oh, rip, rip bot died to the fire. Uh, the big solar panels are four times the size of the accumulators, but what is the correct ratio? If it's, it's something like 84 to 81 for regular solar panels, which gives 60 kilowatts. Oh, this ratio, by the way, will change on different planets because we diff, uh, get different amounts of power. The good kind of headaches? I've had a lot of fun designing such a wall. You'll love the headaches. There's a lot of hidden, not obvious details. Yeah, I'm kind of expecting that. Um... So, I know this is a pretty decent ratio, uh, it's not perfect, but 104, oh yeah, it was 100 to 82, I think, if not 100 to 84 for solar panels to accumulators, um, but that is, oh, we can look it up real quick, Factorio solar panel ratio. Point eight four, okay. So that is six hundred, uh, sixty times a hundred, six thousand kilowatts to eighty four accumulators, which is uh, five megajoules each. Four hundred twenty megajoules. So our ratio is 420 megajoules to uh, 6,000 uh, solar kilowatts maximum. 6 megawatts. I, oh, there we go. I, I'll leave the calculator here so that we can keep those numbers handy. 
um, the rest of this can go because it's just the position of the substations that I'm concerned with here. Um, actually, I'm curious to see if we can get a very good ratio in the space of just one substation because, well, no, we can't unless we do the accumulators on the outside. Let's see. 25 to 21. Yes, indeed. Um, so that would go here. What if we just do a square of these? How many do we get? 32. And then... That's not going to work. Oh, maybe. Uh, that won't work. We could only fit... Well... Unless... Okay, there's no way this is going to be the perf uh, a pretty good ratio, right? That didn't just delete some accumulators, did it? No, surely not. Oh, the bots are trying to give them to me. Okay. Because of different day length, I designed two blueprints, one with solar and gaps filled with accumulators, and the other with mostly accumulators. There are some solar panels in it, so it doesn't look bad, and just place them down until it works. By the way, also coronal mass ejection messes up ratio a bit, at least at the start, because you need a ton of energy storage, yeah. I think the answer to that is um, steam, honestly. Like, it doesn't have to be steam turbines, even. Uh, early on in the game, you're way better spamming um, steam engines than trying to get enough accumulators. Okay. So we'll start with this, and I think we'll need way more accumulators, and then we'll just start adding accumulators and subtracting um, flat solar panels. Um, so this is 6.4 megawatts. This I shouldn't be that shocked by this at this point, but this actually produces at peak, more power than this entire thing. Wow. Um, we have 8 megawatts of storage. We need 420 to match 6, so we need a lot more accumulators and fewer uh, solar panels here. Now we've got 4.8 megawatts to 16 storage. That we're gonna need way more, way more accumulators. Uh, what if we do it like this? I'm pretty sure this is still gonna be too much solar by comparison. Just double check that's updating. Uh, 3.2 megawatts to... Did I mis miscalculate this part, maybe? Well, let's check one of these. Uh, so this is... 43 megawatts? Wait. Oh, I'm doing this wrong with the rate calculator. It doesn't tell us um, the megajoules for the accumulator storage. It just tells us its peak uh, output capacity, which which is half a megajoule instead of five megajoules. So if you multiply this by 10, it tells us what we actually have. Um, 
So this is 240 megajoules of storage. We need double that if we had 6,000. This is actually really close. 240 megajoules of storage instead of 420 for the old design. And 3.2 megajoules of uh, solar panels as opposed to... 6,000 for the old design, so we've got slightly, we've got a slight overproduction of solar panel, uh, solar power. We're slightly under for, um, accumulators, but this is actually, if it's going to be symmetrical within the space of one substation, I don't think we're going to get any closer. Um... You would need an odd number of uh, flat solar panels in, like, one side of this. If it was going to be in a quadrant, you'd get immediately way too many solar panels. If you reduce it, it's nowhere near enough. I'm going to go, it's getting late for me, and I'm hungry, thirsty, bye. No worries. Thanks for dropping by, Maitland Shadow. Good to see you again. Take care. So what does this look like from the map? Well, it looks kind of like a checkerboard. If we swap some of these around, the whole thing could almost look like a giant chessboard or something. Uh, once we copy-pasted a bunch. But no, I don't like that very much. Which looks better? This or... This. I think I like that a little bit better. I don't know. Okay, um, that's going to be our um, design, I think, and since it's, since it can repeat over such a small uh, blueprint size, we'll just blueprint this one. Flat solar panel, uh, flat solar novice. Yeah, perfect ratio for 100% solar, slight overproduction. Okay. Fantastic. So how many, uh, how many flat solar panels did we bring down here? What? Oh. You can stop now. That's fine. Uh, we've got another 220. This whole thing only requires 32. It's 8 per substation. Um, this right here is like 70 substations. We would need 560 flat solar panels to do that much. Alright, we'll put that off for now. We'll start importing flat solar panels from orbit at some point. And we can have... Uh, a bit more than six and a half times more energy-dense uh, solar arrays. Are they much better than the old ones? Yes. Um, the peak output for... Wait, where did that chest one go? Oh, it's over here. 
the peak with um, on Nalvis, which is like the default planet, you get 100% um, uh, exactly 100% solar energy. Uh, regular solar panel gives you 60 kilowatts at peak. Uh, this gives you 400. It is slightly larger, but if you ignore that, um, if you ignore that, it is uh, six point six seven uh, six and two thirds times better. Um, considering the area difference. 9 versus 16. Um, how do I plug that in mathematically? 9 over 16. Or is it 16 over 9? It's 1.78 times larger and 6.67 times more power. So I think it's approximately three times uh, the energy density. Closer to four, if my math is correct. 3.75 times. That is really good. How much coal is in our rocket? 3.4k, that is nowhere near enough. Math looks right to me, thank you. Yeah, I'm just bad enough at math that I would want to sort of estimate that intuitively and then do the math and see if it checks out. Well, I guess that's a good practice anyway. Oh, we're actually like a fifth of the way there. I am having quite enough of all of these alarms, even if I've turned the volume down for them. Oh, this bot has been hovering here trying to deliver this piece of stone wall for about 600 years. Occasionally you get uh, items placed by blueprints that should mark a cliff for deconstruction, but they don't. Or it maybe it only happens when you place the blueprint like so and then cancel the deconstruction of the cliff, because I do do that in cases like this where a cliff is just better. My thought is just do max output divided by number of tiles. That would probably be a more straightforward of figuring it, way of figuring it out, wouldn't it? 60 over 9 versus 400 over 16. Uh, yeah, so that is... Whenever you see a division in math... Um, like, you can often substitute the word per when you see division. So, 400 per 16 tiles is 25, whereas the old one is only 6 and 2 thirds. That is a lot better. And it is, as we said, 3 and 3 quarters times as energy dense. Alright, while this is filling up, I think the next thing I would like to try designing, or it's going to be a big job designing this one, we'll get started now though, is a new wall section. And it's going to revolve around a, a roboport. 
maybe... I'm not going to use the flat solar panels for this because I want it to... Uh, I want it to be usable in vanilla, and we can always change that. Um, but for now, we'll say... This... Let me just check the ratio. I, I assume I had a perfect ratio for these. No, I didn't. There's definitely more um, accumulators than you would normally need in this design. Which makes a lot of sense when your main uh, power consumer is laser turrets. So what's our ratio here? Um, well, it's uh, 28, it's 1 to 1, which is a little bit more accumulators than usual. But I think maybe we could do better. Maybe do something neater. I think more accumulators would actually be a pretty good idea. I would like um, the whole thing to be on one power network, even though it's going to be uh, multiple bot networks. Because if you're going to have these solar powered outposts, uh, the more you link them together, uh, the more you link them together, the more robust they'll be. Having one big solar network. Uh, just a small section of wall here is self-sufficient, but the bigger it gets, the more surplus there is to share. Alright, so we've got our alternate path for the energy there. And remove these poles. Get out of here. And I think big power pole. Oh, if there's going to be only one tile of space between these, then it's not going to be possible to be symmetrical with a big pole. So why don't we try this? And can we get rid of the cliffs? Oh my lord. Uh, get rid of these random deconstruction planners. Wait, did I not... I didn't put that in a blueprint book, did I? Uh, well, it's going to be really easy to recreate. That's one of the good things about this. Uh, substations... Rotate, uh, ratio, 240 to 3.2. Yep, that's right. Wait, did I put it up here? I did not. Okay. Uh, now this solar. I can't remember what I called it earlier. That should have snap to grid relative, though. And that's that. Okay. So we'll have the big electric poles over here. That does reach. That's fantastic. That's perfect, actually. We'll mirror this. And same thing over here. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's 
looking a lot neater than last time as well. Okay, so what's our ratio here? Uh, 16 to 50. It should be way more than enough solar power to... to keep everything going. Maybe we should have some more... Um, Uh, some more just solar panels, though. Maybe we could do it like this. 28 to 50. That's more in the ballpark for what I'm looking for. Okay, and then we've got... Well, to be honest... Okay. This is as far as we can go with the ammo. Like so. What are we requesting here? Uh, I might want to change this for vanilla for now. I'll just make it solid fuel. Although 50 is a lot. Make it like 10. Or even 5. Let's rotate these. Uh, we want... Well, I was going to say we want the walls out as far as possible, but that's not going to be a problem. And we want laser turrets. We're going to need a... a self-powered little section over here. Don't know if we'll do it exactly the same way. Though we might. Probably afford to do this with two laser turrets actually. Um, one thing I don't like about this design is our flame turrets keep getting attacked. Not that they're getting destroyed, but I think I would like to pull them back a bit because it's mainly just where the biters run into the walls that on the other hand I do want them to outrange the laser turrets I don't remember do behemoth spitters ever outrange laser turrets it's kind of odd that I don't know that hmm maybe we could go find out Let's get some shielding. And how is our rocket silo going? Still 395 empty slots. I should probably set up belt to supply that one with coal. We're not outside the walls just yet. Found some behemoth spitters. Um, I want to separate these guys. Okay, how much range do you have? You definitely have more range than that. No? Okay. Gun turret would reach. Laser turret will definitely reach. Okay, I'm gonna run it along here, and then as soon as it spits, I'm gonna walk and 
watch how many tiles it takes um, before... Okay, it looks like about seven or eight tiles that the lasers have extra range over the spitters. Um, that's going to make it pretty easy. Hover over spitter. I think range is listed. Oh. That would make it easy. Oh, it disappeared. Okay. Range is 16. Fair enough. Laser turret range is 24. So yes, it is 8. They don't outrange it, but it happened to me that Biders made a new nest near my wall just outside of the range and then made the, the new worm which attacked the wall. Okay, what's the range of the big worms? What's the worst case scenario? Behemoth worm. Range... 48? Really? Well... That outranges flamethrower turrets, so there's m not much point worrying about it. Alright, um... So I think that's going to make designing this wall pretty easy, actually. Or well, the parts that we're about to focus on. We can definitely... So it was 16 for the big... Uh, big spitters, right? Can you sit still, please? It's 16. Okay, cool. Um, let's start from here. It's about here. If we put our flamethrower turrets all the way back here, that's actually going to be totally fine. I think I'll want to put the gun turrets a bit closer, though. Oops. If we're not putting the flamethrower turrets close to this thing, maybe we can fit more... Mm, nope, I don't think so. What if we have two accumulators, two solar panels, and two... Uh, uh, laser turrets. Actually, I'll go over here for now. Also, I don't need this many advanced circuits. Nor... Uh, processing units. I'll take the space belt up when the time comes. As long as I don't forget. Where are my accumulators? There's plenty of them right here. Why are there no bots coming to pick them up? Because I'm not requesting any. I must have been making room in my inventory for something.
All right. I don't think I considered bottlenecking on a belt when I put beacons over here. Uh, and looks like I don't need to. This whole thing still only does 10 per second. Okay. If the gun turrets are going to be on the edge of uh, the robo network, and we want the gun turrets to be not right up the front, but behind the laser turrets in any case, so that they don't get spat on because they will fold like a lawn chair. And I think we probably want them about here. Or maybe like this. Oh. I kind of forgot to change the condition on these uh, burner inserters when I changed the fuel type. Whoops. Okay, so this is this is the range of a spitter to the laser turrets. Um, it might be worth using substations instead of big power poles for this part, because substations have uh, twenty. Uh, they have uh, one third more hit points, and if we so desire, we can. Well, we, we might have to... We, we could probably get rid of, like, two-thirds of the power switches here and just have a substation delivering power to all of these. It'd be a little bit... If we do that, we can do a lot more with um, how much power we feed into the local... Uh, the local few. Laser turrets. Actually, no, wait, that's... That's no good. We need this one to not be powering these all the time. Hmm. What if we use medium poles? We could maybe make it a little bit bigger. then it's going to be more of a problem to connect it up via power switch. I guess there's a reason that I had these things using big poles before. We could maybe line them up like this. I don't like how that's latching onto those other big poles. Hmm. I guess we could always do like a big pole and then some medium ones. Why does it switch to that di- oh, because this is a substation, that's why. If we can set this up so that for the most part... Um... Is that actually an even ratio uh, distance? No, but it's really close. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. So we'll have our power cell down here. These. Why does a solar panel have more health than a big electric pole? That seems a little odd. Um, I'm just going to remove the power poles for a minute. 
because I want to see uh, how much this can support. Currently it's night time, that's perfect. Wait, is it night time? It is absolutely not night time. Uh, we're just barely able to accumulate power during the day. Our minimum consumption here is 48 kilowatts. We're actually accumulating power relatively quickly. So we're, we're generating 120 kilowatts and using 48 minimum. Um, obviously, because the laser turrets hadn't charged yet, it was taking all of the energy. The question is, can we accumulate charge in the accumulators over the course of uh, more than a day? How much health do these have? 150, same as the big pole. Maybe we'll move, maybe we'll remove this one. But I don't want to touch it for now because I want to see if we end up with more charge uh, tomorrow. I'm positive there's no way to do three laser turrets here. Not unless we add some medium poles or something with some more energy. Hey, Emma. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So this is approximately the range of uh, Behemoth Spitters. We would like to have Flamethrower Turrets reaching that very easily. That's good. can probably just set these equidistant apart. Maybe one in the middle. Put this as far to the side as possible. And then... Oh, that, re that reach is perfect. Love it. Fantastic. Might want to add some piping just for fluid storage, though. Maybe just a couple of big tanks for each section. Seems like this would be the safest spot. Um, we could have a power pole in the middle. D West, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Designing a new defense? Yes. Uh, so we're going for an iteration on this design, which has the automatic uh, the power saving features for the laser turrets. Um, but also... Um, I want to reposition the flamethrower turrets a bit, get them further behind the laser turrets that can take damage much better, uh, move the wall back a bit more, I think, and we'll still have the gun turrets as well. This is the, this is one issue. The gun turrets are already just barely reaching over this wall, so we'll probably still have the wall relatively close. Um, I would also... I might have to jump into Sandbox to really play with this properly. But apart from just having some uh, some clever... That is a weird sound for picking up a wall. Apart from having some, you know, zigzags the biters have to go through and stuff, 
Um, I would actually like to play with gates that are cleverly timed. Maybe on a clock. Maybe something else. Um, ideally, I would like to respond them. Uh, I would like them to respond to biter detection, and have gates close right when the biters would normally get somewhere, and then they hopefully get confused for a second. The Bilka wall? Generally a bad idea to pass the fuel through the flamethrowers. If one gets broken, several will run out of fuel. Yeah, um, we've done something about that down here. Uh, we'll, pr we'll probably do something similar to this. So, the oil can get where it's going independent of whether these flamethrowers get destroyed. Um... If we really want to go overboard with the heavy oil storage, we could do this. Well, not heavy oil, uh, crude oil. Any type of oil for that matter. Maybe it would look better to just do it this way. Maybe. But we've got the flamethrowers pretty far back. So, if they're getting destroyed, something is already very, very wrong. Um, we'll also have uh, gun turrets in between them. There's no middle between these ones. Unfortunate. That should be okay. I actually like that quite a bit. If only there was a way to... Well, no, we don't actually want these fitting too snugly together. I kind of like the look of this, though. would use light oil, it's more efficient, unless you need to burn off oil. Um, light oil used to be more efficient, and I checked relatively recently, it actually isn't anymore. Um, you get the same amount, well, in any case, you get the same amount of damage out of each type of oil. Um, we can go look at this one right now. Actually, I'll place some flamethrower turrets up here. Uh, this one will be heavy oil. Can we get light oil? Somewhere? Not really. And then... Petroleum. Can't quite squeeze it in there. What we've already got. And just put it over here, I guess. Okay, so crude oil. Uh, have to get out of the map and then do this. Crude... I can't click on it. What the hell? Oh, okay. Fluid damage modifier 100%. That's with crude. And for... 
light oil it's a hundred and oh it's a hundred and ten percent did I just miss that when I double checked this before heavy is a hundred and five and petroleum is not oh it doesn't take petroleum okay well that's weird I stopped using light oil because I thought it wasn't better anymore. Um, also, we can turn uh, 32 crude oil into only 22 light. Although we get some more of everything else, obviously. Let's look at the recipes. If we crack heavy oil as well, um, 100 crude, ignoring the water, 100 crude oil becomes 70 light plus 20 heavy. Uh, plus 15 light, so 95 light oil and a bunch of petroleum. Well, that settles it. We absolutely should, at least at this point in the game, be using light oil for flamethrowers. Um, I'm not going to bother to change it with the existing uh, system, but maybe if we expand out and make another wall, we'll definitely use light oil. We've got the infrastructure already set up for it as well. We've got uh, light oil at the in the train network speed running community used such a circuit controlled gate wall during fighter battles you could ask for a tip uh, for a blueprint there i would rather figure out the blueprint myself but yeah good to know it actually does something oh that's exactly where I wanted to measure to. All right. Oh yeah, let's check on this power network. Uh, accumulators have been doing their thing at night. I, I've said this before, but I do wish it would show on the graph accumulator charge as well as production, but we can tell from this right here that we reached a uh, full accumulator charge less than two minutes into full daytime. Well, actually, we've reached full accumulator charge uh, two and a half minutes after the sun just started coming up. And then we have uh, one, two, three full minutes before the accumulators did anything at all. That's pretty good. I need to know the minimum value that the accumulators drop to, though. Which we're right on time to find out. Alright, let's get a combinator here. Well, actually, I could just link that like that. We're going down to 91. It'll be a smaller number if I remove some accumulators. 89. 88. Sun's about to start coming up. 87. 86. 85. 84. Eighty-three. I would have thought by now... Oh, okay, we haven't reached equilibrium yet. Now it's going to go back up. Nope, eighty-two. I think when it reaches... When the solar energy reaches right here, then, we'll, then it will stop dropping. Okay, so let's call it eighty percent. 
if accumulated charge drops below 80%, we want to uh, connect a power switch up to here. Don't think that's going to reach though. How close can we make this? We could definitely do that. That's good. Now the power switch is somewhere safe as well. We can do it all the way up here if we want to. And it's going to be very easy to build our circuit logic where there's always going to be power as well. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with using two lasers per... Um, Our system over here. It's going to look weird if I put the substation directly in front of the flamethrower turret. But what are you going to do? Now, something that you would think would cause a problem, but somehow didn't. In this old design, uh, the substation for this big bank of laser turrets that we mostly leave switched off is touching these two solar panels. I don't know why, but that somehow doesn't completely crash the whole using these two solar panels and an accumulator to keep this laser turret charged business. I guess if it was touching the uh, accumulator, that would be a problem. Which is what is happening this time. Um, yeah. Wait, what? That? We've got 24 times 5. Oh, that's exactly 120 kilowatts. So now it's going to start draining. Hey, Maholic. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the raid. Uh, I almost typed shout out raid. How was your stream? And if I lay this out like this, how on earth am I going to do the thing? thing with the substations. Maybe... I think I'll just spread these ones out a little bit more, so move all of this stuff over to the side a bit. Cannot be stretched any longer, you say. Oh. What? Yes, it can. Okay. I don't know exactly where it's going to go. Um, I would like to have... I don't think it's possible, but I would like to have the exact same distance uh, between these things and the substations on either side. Good stream was doing Nilius getting lost in complexity. Howdy again. The defenses are getting a redo. They already were OP, I thought. Definitely. Nyron Wolf, thank you very much for the host. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, how did I do this? Oh, I see. So, it's okay to have the substations touching the solar panels on either side. So if we do it like this, I think that's what I want to do. Uh, flamethrower range just needs to be able to reach the longest range spitters. So we could probably bring that forward a little bit. Uh, gun turrets just barely have to be able to reach over the wall. A little bit less. Yep, 
Yeah, I do want to make sure it's like two tiles because of how big the behemoth biters are. So maybe like this. Which means our flamethrower turrets could be further back. I think I will do that. Although they no longer have the gun turrets fitting snugly next to them. Uh, if we're doing this, I feel like... Wait, how often have I done the storage tanks here? There's one storage tank for every single flamethrower turret. That seems a little excessive, but... There is no overkill, there's only open fire, and I need to reload. It looks kind of cool as well. Are behemoths the green biters? Yes. I want the flamethrower turrets to be able to reach uh, the behemoth spitters if they are... If they're attacking the laser turrets. I just realized with certain mods, the be or not just with certain mods, the behemoth spitters could snipe the walls. Uh, what's their range again? 12? What's going on over here? Oh, that's right. Okay. 16. Hmm. So... Uh, with Rampant, I think, if I put the flamethrower turrets back there, the spitters will be able to snipe the wall. They are just out of range. Yeah, what's the range of our laser turrets here? Almost enough. I guess we'll move the wall back just a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more than that. The laser turrets can reach the... Uh, uh, if the group of laser turrets that's not always switched on... Um, can't... Uh, it, it has to be the laser turrets here that can reach. That might be a little bit of a problem. I guess we're moving the wall further back. I might move the flamethrower turrets a bit further forward, though. Alright, that should actually be fine. It's not like Behemoth Biters are going to destroy... No, they're not going to be able to reach this stuff. And we maybe don't need that many laser turrets... Uh, ...in this section. I could be wrong. Gun turrets could go back a bit further since the wall is back here now. Maybe spread them out a little bit more. Whoops. Oh, I like that actually. That that's a really good fit. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, get out of here for now. And... Is this actually as far as this reaches? 
No. We can do this pretty much wherever we want. Put uranium turrets closer to the wall? Um, no, the gun turrets are more of a last resort. Okay. That should be fine. I think I will add more laser turrets though. That looks pretty good. I think we will need... Uh, I wonder if I can improve on the old design, but I think we will need three power switches for each of these sections. I like that the um, laser turrets don't flash, saying they've got no power, just because they're touching the solar panels like this. They're dealing thousands of damage per second at such a waste. Uh, it's a waste of ammo if we're having them fire when there's just a really light attack from the fighters. This only costs energy and oil most of the time. Uh, ammo, we actually have to... Like, obviously electricity is very easy to get here. Oil is by far the second easier thing to get here for ammo. Um, the bullets have to be transported by cargo wagon and then brought by bot. And they're a lot more expensive for what they do. Alright, what if we put... I might just have to have an extra power pole for the power switches. Uh, we'll see. Where are my power switches? Attacks are never small in late game, though. Yeah, but... Uh, they come in groups that are really vulnerable to flamethrower damage. Um, I really prefer to have the gun turrets as just kind of a oh shit kind of um, use case. Does that reach? Yep. And then... Could put the power switches here. That would probably send me a save file. I will do it right for you. How dare you? Also, how you doing RPHL streams? Oh, that's not gonna be where I want it. And then, same thing over here, I think. Except, this is not quite going to be in the middle. If this is two tiles, does that mean we could actually make all of this fit Uh, so it's the same distance apart every time. Uh, so this would go here. Okay, so far so good. I think it does. And then we'll line these up directly behind. Okay, that's kind of an obscene amount of storage though, even by my reckoning. Um, 
maybe we only need the storage tanks, like, one per section. Maybe. If we do... This is going to look a bit weirder, though. So this goes here. I guess I can live with that. And then... Same again. My only defense flamethrowers just barely reach over the wall. I have no problem where spitters only go for the walls. Um, yeah, I've heard they do it in Rampant, and from what I remember, yes they do. And I do like to play Rampant, so I would like to design a blueprint that will work for that. My coffee ours ran off during cooking. I fried my eggs to crispy black condition too. Rip. And can't win in TAB because I miss that one sneaky zombo? What? I am not sure what's going on. Alright, that looks pretty good. And then, and then we just need the power switch stuff. We can squeeze the uh, the latch combinators in here. That'll work pretty well. We need three of them though, so probably put this here or here or here. Uh, I don't think the wire is going to reach if we do this. Nope. Maybe we'll do... We need three long combinators. We could put them, like, here, I guess. Uh, I don't like that. We also need the circuit wire from this accumulator to reach our combinators. Well, we can just piggyback off of the uh, power switch. That's fine. Hmm. So we need three decider combinators. Um, two of them say if accumulator charge is less than or greater than something out a signal. Um, and then a memory cell that holds onto that signal. If red greater than green, I'll put red. I would also like to add the usual lights. Nope. Nope. You appear to be having power issues. No, we're fine. Yeah, we haven't had any power issues for a while. A hey, Zavoxifil. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And same to you, Nicknock. The West Dude, good to see you again. Didn't miss anyone, did I? No, nope, we're good. Hmm. Maybe I could move these all one tile forward or something. Just so that I could 
Um, oops. Just so that I could better fit the uh, combinators over here. So we need the accumulator charge from here. Does that actually reach now, though, directly? Oh, it does. Fantastic. And then we connect to this. And then this goes here. Alright, so if accumulated charge drops below 80%, we know that these lasers are firing. And we'll output like red for red alert. I do want to use uh, colored lights for this, so that's why I'm doing it that way. When normally, intuitively, the green signal might be switch on. I actually like that look a little bit better. Red greater than green. Oh, this has to connect to its own input. There we go. Actually, we don't need a red wire here because this is outputs only. So that just goes all the way around there. Nice clean look for the wires. Um... If A is greater than 99%, then we can switch off. And once this receives a green signal, red is definitely not greater than green. Power will switch off again. Let's just confirm that this will connect. That's good. Laser turrets without power is a problem? Nah. Oh, we did make it so that these are flashing all the time though, by moving those apart a little bit. I don't love that, but it's not like I'll be looking at them all the time. Okay, so then power goes from here to here, to here to here, and we have the exact same conditions on these power switches. Do I want to just run the wire directly like that, or would it look tidier if I do it this way? This is... I feel like that looks a little bit... It looks messy either way. No, all of these wires coming up here look really messy. Let's do it like this. That seems pretty good to me. And then red signal greater than zero, use colors. Same condition for our power switches. So once these two laser turrets start firing, accumulator charge drops below 80%. Uh, red signal is activated and held onto until accumulator charge is back up to 100 Red signal switches all three of these power switches, which powers this from the main network and powers its neighbors from through here. And then 
and then we copy paste. And of course we'll have to make sure... What? Oh, something's wrong here. I didn't move all of these down a little bit, that's why. Alright, so that goes there. I think that's it. We just have to double check the wiring because uh, Factorio loves to place wires for power uh, power connections that you don't necessarily want if you're using power switches. But this does look correct. And then we make some blueprint, uh, make some more wall. So this is the part where we add some zigzaggy bits. Um, helps to slow down and confuse the biters. We're assuming we're dealing with behemoths. We want it to line up with the middle uh, with this blueprint. It says six. Make it eight. And then two tiles. That's probably not going to... That's almost perfect. Maybe just do nine over here. Hmm. If anything, we want to bias them to come to our laser turrets that are always switched on but they have more range than I realized so that's not going to be a problem actually yeah this will be fine so this is 8 8 8 I can line those up perfectly this one's going to have to be a little bit different but that's okay It'll just end up being a slightly bigger gap here. This one will be slightly longer. No, I think I'll do it like this. Is that going to be... I think we need to expand this out both ways to make sure... I haven't checked on the progress with our rocket for a while. It's still, it's still half empty. Okay. Also, these need to be moved down one tile. Good thing I spotted that now rather than later. And then 
that seems okay. I'm really surprised at how consistent the spacing is with uh, these sections right here. Quite pleased with that. This has to go here. Alright, so what does it actually look like? This is ten tiles now, and these are nine each. I can live with that, that's fine. And if we're going to mess around with gates, I mean, I think, to be honest, that'll be a whole other experiment that we'll have to do in sandbox, but maybe if we add them in key gaps over here and maybe turn the gates on around these laser turrets once these power switches flip. Might be worth doing. So what if we just have gates like here, 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 and so on, and each of them respond to the nearest power switch switching on or off. Where are my gates? Oh, there they are. I don't suppose the wire reaches... Nope. What about this? Oh, it has to connect to this part. Um, I've run out of spiked wall. Let's go get some more. And while we're at it, we should check that certain things are still running properly. Nuclear power is looking pretty good. Very important. I don't see that we've got a lot of trains stuck anywhere. Uh, what happened here? We're asking for the maximum. Okay, so this is actually... What? These chests are full. Each divided by negative 24 output each. Enable, disable, electronic circuit greater than zero. Is it not... The average would be 4.7 thousand. You've got 9.6 thousand. Why are you switched on? Oh, I think I did this backwards. Nope. Why are, the, why are all of them switched off? Is this for a expansion, or are you replacing existing walls? Um, I'm not going to bother replacing the existing walls. They are doing well enough. Um, but when I expand, I'll definitely be using the new blueprint. And... Um... It's also designing for, you know, future playthroughs. But why... How did this happen with the balanced unloader? If we have greater than or equal to the average we want to output... The average is most definitely not zero. Each divided by negative 24 output each. There are tw oh, I think I see the problem. Yeah, I see the problem. I accidentally fed the 
negative 230,000 green circuits. Uh, not just to the LTN stop, but to this combinator right here. And that was the result. Now it works. And if we rebalance this... How is it we're not using any, any green circuits, though? Like, nothing. Oh my goodness, the entire base is, has built everything. Um, wow. How is this not full, though? Oh, I see. It is finished. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, we're still making uh, uranium ammo. Nope. But yeah, basically, we've built everything. Who would have thought? Alright. While I'm here, though, uh, another way we could have fixed this is by using the new style of balanced unloader which is more than good enough most of the time. Why is... Oh, it's doing... Wait, what? This is a weird layout that I did this time. Alright, let's just remove this. Uh, balanced unloader. 90 per second right. And the way this works is very straightforward. Uh, each stack inserter has the same setting, read hand contents hold. Everything has to be equal to zero for them to output. And we also read a little bit of belt right here, just to be sure. And as long as you put equal amounts in the chests to start with, it will stay balanced, even though it doesn't know how much is in these chests. I kind of love watching these, uh, these inserters all move at the same time. Boop. Boop. Okay, back to the wall. Let's just check on our rocket, though. 14k. We've still got 287 empty slots. So we're almost halfway full. Um, I think it would be a good idea... to bring some coal over. Uh, UPS is dropping a bit. Let's hit the old performance mode. And this way. I don't even know that that iron is going anywhere at this point. I should probably tidy that up. Okay. Maybe we should have 
couple more inserters here as well. There we go. So that'll be 192 stacks of coal right next to our uh, cargo rocket cycling. Unfortunately, they are taking the coal away from here. Back to the start of the belt, though. Um, I think to fix that, all I have to do is make these buffer chests. They won't take from buffers to put him in other buffers. So if I just don't put any requests on this and leave it as a buffer chest, it's like a passive provider except they won't take it to put it in buffers. That's going to speed up loading quite a bit. Like, really going to speed it up. Okay. Let's see if we can finish designing our wall before it's time for the rocket to launch. Gotta start spending more, I guess. Should I start nuking my own base? We could probably up the production speed for spiked steel walls. I would love to upgrade all of these to that. Stimpatch Bay Twitch, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I forgot that I had gates set to zero. So the bots took them away. Okay. So if we connect these to... I also forgot I needed to place these walls right here. Um... I kind of do want to use the spiked steel walls, though, at this point in the game. You can always run an upgrade planner over it to make the vanilla version. Um, where are our spiked walls? Here we go. That's... that's a lot. Which is good. Why? Oh, I see. So we're going to connect these gates to the nearest uh, power switches. And... Well, maybe not connect that one. Uh, open gate, read sensor, sends a signal to the circuit network when a character is coming towards the gate, and it should open. I think by character it means player, not like a biter. It would be great if we could detect biters like this, though. Uh, open gate when red signal is greater when red signal equals zero. And then this one goes here. These are not going to touch. This is going to go over here. I don't know how effective this is going to be, um, but I would kind of like to throw it out there as an experiment. So it's open until this power switch is flipped, uh, then it closes. 
So the biters are probably going to be running, like, this way, maybe. And then all of a sudden the gate's shut. And hopefully they get confused at least for, like, half a second. Which is going to make a pretty big difference. So this goes here. And this goes here. Here. Why can't we connect this here? Because it's just a ghost? I connected this one. Oh, I see. It didn't connect that yet. That was a ghost. Uh, Huslu, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So that's going to go up here. Oh, it's closed. Oh, because the red lights are on. How did this happen? That looks kind of cool on the map, too. Uh, probably because we just built some of these accumulators or something. Uh, most of these walls we don't really need to place, but there's no harm in just doing it. The main thing is we have enough to make the blueprint in the middle. And I think... I think that's it. This is like Squid Game... Green light, red light, pew pew. Oh no. I haven't actually watched that yet. I wonder why these accumulators are not fully charged. Okay, here it goes. And... Oh. I could, if I really wanted to... Add some solar panels, like so. Uh, just so that these don't flash all the time. The solar panels are also within range of the um, substations up here, so it's not like they'll be doing nothing. Uh, Stantit, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You should. Maybe I will. Oh, that's... that's no good, actually. What's our ratio for the main network? 32 to 50. I think that's pretty good. I might put these in the middle. Or we could just put one, like, here. Be a bit more walkable. Yeah, I th think I like that. This one isn't being touched by this substation, though. Hmm. Maybe like this? It's a bit more snug. Yeah, that's pretty good. Or we could maybe do this as well. Obviously, if you don't have a jetpack or squeak through, that could be a little bit annoying. In which case, you'd probably just do this. I want to make it for vanilla. So, why don't we do that? Except we'll have to lean these ones a little bit further in. Can we squeeze through here in vanilla? Yeah. Okay. 
am pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to make a blueprint. This is going to be the final version, right? Well, no, let's add um, artillery as well. So I don't normally make stationary artillery these days. So let's go and get that automated. Not exactly sure where I want to do it. Uh, we need a lot of steel, concrete, red circuits, and cogs, so here is pretty good. Concrete steel is the main thing. Concrete and steel. Uh, I don't have a blue... Okay, there we go. We could just add it to these requests. We could also help out a bit this way. Um, it feels bad just botting it when it's so close, but it's probably fine. And I'll add steel here as well. No, I won't. Uh, red circuits and cogs. Actually, I'll add zero steel just so we know that's where it goes. Don't need that much. Actually, how long does this take to make? 40 seconds, wow. And what does it stack to? 10. Wait, I've already got one. And I do mean exactly one. Okay, we'll limit this to 40. Wait, no, it's, um, it stacks to 10, doesn't it? So 400. Speaking of using resources, no, we don't really need to make more than that. We've got plenty of coal mining drills as well. I guess we could accumulate more coal mining drills. We will want a bunch of them eventually. So here we could fit, f like, 45? Wait, how many med packs are we putting in here? A hundred. Oh, wait, we have no more fish. Um, isn't there a recipe for med packs that doesn't involve fish? Plastic, water, heavy oil, and iron plate. Wait, was that our rocket? That's our rocket. Um... I'm just going to make a little exception. We're not going to automatically launch this the first time. I'll just get rid of this green signal right here. That actually loaded a lot quicker than I thought it would after after we moved uh, after we belted this coal. Um so once that's once we feel like it, we'll go to space with that rocket. Meanwhile, um, what were we doing here? Artillery? Artillery. And it's in my trash slots, isn't it? Okay. I could probably speed this up a little bit. Just a tad. And for the artillery, I think... Wait. 
where did my artillery go? Here it is. Uh, for the artillery, I think we will... Uh, I can't make it symmetrical if I... If I have just one per section. That's unfortunate. A hey, Marco Apollo. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think there's only one location that's uh, really obvious for this. Oh, I almost forgot the most important part of uh, this new design. Um, we're not keeping... We're separating all of these RoboPort networks. So we need to figure out some requests and have some inserters uh, moving things between the RoboPort networks. I wonder how we should go about it. Well, let's finish designing the actual military part first. Um, Feel like feel like the artillery should be protected. We can put well, spiked steel walls is a bit overkill. Maybe we'll put regular walls here or something. Or we could just not. Oh, this is actually this is actually the super obvious place to put the artillery, but. The solar panels are occupying that space. Now, I like this better anyway. It's uh, sort of safely out of the way. We'll do the same thing as we did with the gun turrets. Where... We use some solid fuel and don't count on power for loading the shells. Actually, how quickly do regular artillery turrets fire? I'm thinking a burner inserter might actually be, like, way too slow. But now the power doesn't line up the way I would like. What if I do it like this? Then the requester chest wouldn't be within the robo network. Um... What if we do it like this? Then we're putting two artillery turrets right next to each other, which is like super pointless. With the upgrade pretty fast? You mean like uh, stack inserters? We could maybe remove a couple of these solar panels and snug Put these nice and snug in here. I actually like uh, these locations pretty well. Yeah, I think I think we might go with that. And have the artillery shell destroy this wire. Okay, so we can definitely use a regular inserter for that. It also puts our Wester chests right here. The firing rate of the turrets. Oh, right. I'm guessing a yellow inserter is probably more than enough, but... Oh, that doesn't... Oh, we could just use the same... Request a chest here. That's good. Okay. Um, so at most this is... Well, with, this, with cargo size, the bots can go over a stack, but the stack size of these is 200, so there's no worries there. So we'll have um, 40... Five stacks available for artillery shells. And same thing over here. Nice. Actually like that quite a bit. 
Although I can't help but imagine the vibration from firing the artillery, destroying the solar panels. Okay, time to figure out how to share items between the networks. I guess because I've already figured out the trash um, logistic drop-offs, this probably shouldn't be too difficult. Probably. But on the other hand, maybe it will be. I hope I'm not going to get a system where I would like to have... Oh no, that'll be fine. If we have, like, green wire on the left and red wire on the right reading the logistic network, it could both come to this big electric pole, and we could read from both networks. Uh, without, like, crosstalk. That seems like a pretty good idea. Let's use the navigation set to do it nice and easily. Red wire goes here. Yeah, so that's a repeating pattern that will work just fine. We read the logistic network contents. Probably also read robot statistics. Um, yeah, robot statistics. Uh, we'll say total logistic bots and construction bots. And we need to have a constant combinator to define a set amount of stuff that we want in each network. And maybe we'll use a filter inserter. Oh, we need to figure out where the chests are going to fit. Um, since we have two tiles of gap, we might need, if we're going to use filters, we'll have to put like extra chests or like a little, little piece of belt or something. Um, if we can figure out how to do this without filter inserters, we could just have um, uh, chests like so. That looks nice, thank you. But let's start with the filter thing that I had in mind and see if it's feasible. So if we set filters whitelist and have a negative constant combinator, I don't like that there's nowhere that I can put this that'll be symmetrical but let's put it as close as possible to the existing wires. Cargo wagon in between. I suppose you could do that. It does happen to line up where we've placed it. But no, I don't think we'll do it that way. I mean, honestly, it would be one of the easier ways to do it. Because, yeah, you could have, uh, like, requester chests and stuff. Just like so. Do it the other way as well. Um, we could also, in space exploration, we could use... Um, what are they called? Uh, cargo pods? Although you can't read what's actually in the cargo pod. 
but it is a 2x2 two two chest if you place it on the ground. The pods? Yes, indeed. Okay, so let's say in each small little network we want... Let's be generous and say a stack of construction bots. And uh, just a few logistic bots. This will be like 50 extra beyond one or a stack size, but that's fine. I don't feel like adjusting it for that. Um, what else do we need? Ammo? Well. I think a stack of each type of ammo is probably fine. We'll see. Artillery shells, though, we're going to want quite a bit more. Um, I guess it's not going to count it as being in the network when it's in the requester chests. You can see here it definitely doesn't. So we probably only need a little bit of uh, artillery shell just to get where it's going. So I think from the green wire over here, we're going to just set requests. So we're requesting the entire uh, logistic network except anything that's still negative is going to not be requested. I don't know how I'm going to do a trash train system with this. Like, if, if I pick up some wood over here, uh, what happens with this logistic network is it gets taken to this requester chest right here and eventually gets whisked away. Um, I don't see how I'm going to do that with uh, with a wall where it's a bunch of separate logistic networks. If anything, I think we would have to have... Um, well, unless we're going to have a trash train uh, pickup stop at every single... Um, sell, which we're not, I think what we'll end up doing is like having a, having a request a chest for stuff that doesn't belong here at all, and we'll literally just belt it back somewhere. Probably use yellow belt for that since the pace really, really doesn't matter. But for now, let's just assume that everything we, everything here is something that belongs, but we only want so much stuff in each, uh, each section. We'll put a storage chest here. We don't need to make it a green chest like we've been doing over here. I would just move them from network 1 to network 2, etc. And at the end you can pick it up. So both ends, if we're gonna... If we're gonna blueprint it like that. I guess that's not too bad. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. So if we put something in here, it counts as being in the logistic network, right? If it's a green chest... It still counts, okay. And if it's a blue chest, it doesn't. So we'll use a storage chest. One per cell. Um, no filter. And... 
just for testing purposes, let's say... Well, let's say we're allowed to have 50 glass. And I'll put 100 in here. So now we're requesting 50. Um, the only thing I'm not sure is... It's going to... We're going to have to get a signal from the neighbor that's telling us whether it's got everything at once. And then we would have to distinguish between items that belong here and items that don't. This is getting tricky. Is it okay if we just send everything that's overflow to both directions and eventually maybe it'll sort itself out? I doubt it. Um, we also need a system to uh, put bots into the uh, roboports. Which should be pretty easy. Um, how about a... Well, why don't we just put the storage chest here? And... Huh. I think we... Oh, I don't want to put another roboport. Just to be able to read the bot statistics. I might have to, question mark? We need to, re we definitely need to read logistical network contents, unless we're going to, like, read all of the... Well, no, we could read the storage chest instead. Everything else is a requester. Okay, so we can read the storage chest or chests instead of doing this. And then we can read robot statistics into a filter inserter. Uh, okay. I think we'll get rid of one of the... Uh, one of the accumulators. Just to make room. Or... I don't like doing that. Uh, I don't like this either way, with how things are going to fit. Storage chest, constant combinator, inserter. Okay, fine. Put this here. This goes here. And a filter inserter to pick up the bots. Uh, I forgot we're not going to connect this to here anymore. It's going to be connected to our storage chests. Actually, maybe... Maybe that storage chest could go here. This could be a buffer chest for just the bots. How will you get bots from A to B when B has no bots, yet it needs to fill the robopod? We'll get there. Okay, I think I'll make this a um, green chest. Um, just to confirm, things that are in the green chest do get counted as being in the logistic network. We'll... Put all of our construction bots and logistic bots. Whoops. And lastly, repair packs. 
um, eight stacks can fit here. We won't actually be trying to get eight stacks, but hypothetically. Okay. We can't... Let me check something. Oh, you can read contents or request from this, but we just want to read contents. And then red wire goes to here. So that's our logistic network contents still on the red and green wires. Um, from the RoboPort, we will read bot statistics. We'll put... Um, should we go by total bots or... Yeah, I think we'll go by total. Uh, I think this has to go... I think this has to connect to here, though. So we... Oops. So we can't use this combinator with this filter inserter. In that case, let's keep it simple and just say available bots. Uh, available logistic bots, available construction bots. Set filters blacklist. So if there's none available, it'll put more bots in. It's a shame you can't turn off robot ports via logic. Yeah, that's true. That would definitely open up some possibilities. Um, maybe I should move this constant combinator and we could... Uh, take bots out of the system if it's really overfilling. Hmm. I wonder. So under what circumstances do we want to take bots out of this? If there's... If, if we don't have our quota for bots? If we put a bot in here and there's a build job, if we put a construction bot in here, is it going to build before this thing manages to pick it up? They have an internal storage, so they could still keep connected to their network. You can turn RoboPorts off with power switches, that's true. Um, but they have uh, electricity storage, so it'll take, a, it'll take a little while before it stops working. Um, so I guess... Connect this here. Set filters blacklist. I don't know if that's going to cause chaos. We'll see. We shall see. I thought that would look a little bit cleaner, but it doesn't really. Okay. So let's suppose... Where are my bots? Let's suppose we've got 50 bots in this network. What are you doing? Set filters. Oh, you're only reading what's in the chests. Okay. Also, we asked for 50. Let's make it 10 per section. That should be more than enough. Okay, so that leaves some bots in the port and in the robo network. It also allows bots that have finished building here 
to end up getting sent to another section. Um, there will be... Uh, maybe three or four hundred items per section. So it'll take ten of them, like, forty trips to build everything. Except they'll be short trips. And that's if it's building from scratch. Oh, did I forget the part? Okay, the roboports can build each other. The, the part where this is going to be self-building might be tricky. I hope we're not going to need to, like, belt... Are we going to need to belt construction bots to the roboport? I th or at least... We'll have to belt at least one logistic bot to the roboport, right? A shot cut. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Stimpatch Bait Twitch. Thank you again for the following. That was my solution, the belt. Yeah, I don't see how we're going to do it without the belt. Um, if we had another RoboPort nice and close, obviously the... Uh, the RoboPort networks are going to merge. So... And I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the tidiest way to do this would be, like, undergrounds up here. Is that symmetrical? I think so. Yeah, it is. Except it needs to go both ways. Hmm. I don't want to use a belt. Oh no. But I, I went to all this trouble already. I think we're going to take a break from designing this and... Let's go back to space for a bit. But I'm pretty sure it's going to come down to... Yes, a belt is required. I mean... We need something that is not a logistic bot... To get a bot... From... Uh, from the edge of this... Robo network into this robo port. Uh, other than a train, I don't know what it's going to be besides a bot, uh, a belt. Unless we're happy to not auto build the entire wall and we'll have to seed each cell with a logistic bot. I don't like that. It means if all of the logistic bots somehow die, um, there's going to be trouble. Alright, let's... Uh... Wait, can I do this from here? I can do it with the... There we go. So that should launch our rocket? Yes? Fantastic. Mostly it's done by placing chests on the edge of the network and use an inserter between the chests. Yes, but those chests are quite far from the RoboPort. So, uh-oh, we're drowning. And I just dropped a million items. Luckily they don't land on the belts. Also I brought spiked walls instead of, like, space belt. I probably should have thought that through. Okay, I think that's everything. And you 
you can have your ice back. Uh, yes, indeed. I'm going to look for a mod that can turn off robot pods. Okay. Uh, we need just a little bit of heavy oil. Let's change this recipe to fill. And give it this uh, empty barrel. There we go. Here it is. I almost forgot where I placed this. That should be just enough to get started. Although, I don't know why this one doesn't have steam yet. Oh, that's that's probably why. Yeah, that that'll that'll do it. Why don't we just place some regular space pipe? Let's go pick up a bit of everything though. Space pipe wise. You left constant combinators under inserters. Oh, I did too. Thank you. Meet the Scorch. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, let there be steam. And then let there be coal liquefaction. Fantastic. And then let there be lubricant. And where's our water? Oh, there we go. And let there be cosmic water. Let there be sulfur, eventually. And chemical gel, nice. Oh, 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 oh. Definitely don't connect that yet. We need to um, make sure we circuit wire up this whole thing. And make sure we set the circuit conditions to count the sulfur that we're putting on the belt. And... Uh-oh. What's going on over here? Nothing too bad. What the hex are you building? Mixed belt? Burn it with fire? <laughs> no. There's no fire in space. I mean... Not for very long anyway, right? Unless you count suns. Uh, what were we doing? What the hex are you building? Um, kind of rebuilding the space base, but with a lot more planning and organization this time. Making it a lot neater. Um, we've also fully automated delivery of coal and ice to make all of the fluids. That will go on not forever because we haven't automated... Um, delivery of ice, but, uh, to the home world, that is, but other than that, it, it's going to take a very, very, very long time to run out of ice. We should also have, oh, oh, um, okay, I might... Might want to redesign this a little bit, since we need to put solid items into it um, that are going to be from the sushi belt. Kind of forgot that that needed items from the sushi belt. Let's grab ourselves some more scaffolding. 
Oh, my inventory is pretty full. I really should have remembered to check uh, with my inventory before I came back up here. Um, let's put all of this away for now. And get some more scaffolding. I think we'll put the um, uh, thermofluid, is it called? Yeah. We'll put the thermofluid production right about here. line it up with the belt where we're going to put the thermo fluid, I think. So, may as you... Oh, that was it. We were going to use that one. May as well use this one. I think I found something. Better roboports. Oh, there goes the mystery sound again. Can change various stuff about electricity consumption of roboports, logistic bots, and construction bots. Roboport idle consumption, recharge rate, energy stored, charging bot rate. Bot energy consumed, bot energy stored, recharge parameters, bot speed penalty when out of energy. Well, that's just a game balance thing. You can't, like, make them enable, disable at will, right? You can set the internal power. Wait, is this, on, is this like, on a per roboport basis, or is it just a settings thing? No, it looks like it just... It looks like it just changes the rules. Rip. Alright, can we do a... a niner over here? Let's do it like that. And then... There's no way to line these up very well, right? Yeah, we could do it this way. I don't like the way that sticks out, but this is one piece of pipe. No, I don't like that. That's fine. I think I have to learn how to make a mod now. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, so if we're putting something onto the belt, it is the green wire. And the red wire gets multiplied by negative one. So we'll say... I don't have any space belt. What? Oh, here we go. Uh, green wire. Read belt contents pulse. Enable, disable, sulfur is less than 200. I think 200 is the standard number we're using for each resource at the moment. We may change that, but that should be it. Let's check, shall we? Uh-oh. Now, what's wrong with that? Green wire from here. Oh, it's just not connected over here. That's why. Also... Oh, I see. 
Okay. So this green wire goes here. Um, and should also be connected to this. There we go. Where's that sulfur? There we go. You can use that mod for the vanilla robo ports. And use a modded robo for when you want energy storage. I've tried to play SpaceX and find it boring and then I watch you and you make it so interesting. Need to change my map. Uh, thank you. SpaceX and Space Exploration are different mod packs. Never heard that before. Developers need to make it easier to see with the wires slash connection points. Maybe. Sometimes they can be very messy. Some some different cosmetic options to do exactly the same thing would definitely help a bit. Okay, so let's go pick up our manufactories again. And we need uh, cosmic water and heavy oil. Heavy oil? Oh, that's right, we piped it over here. It might be cleaner to pipe it all the way over this way now. Um... Is this a 15 -er? No. Yeah, I think I'll get rid of these pipes. It's going to be a lot less messy that way. I hate to delete this cosmic water, but we're producing it so quickly that if I try to, like, make space for it, it's not really going to... Wait, what? Has... Have these two machines not been doing anything? Products finished... zero. No. Does it not work if I do the output here directly? Do I have to move this upper tile? Well, I guess this pipe over here is going to be a bit more neat. Uh, and maybe we can salvage. Oh, this is empty. Well, technically not quite empty. Let's do this. Alright. Let's move all of these up a bit. And then... This goes here. Now it doesn't line up with our storage tanks. It it puts it straight into the storage tanks, it just doesn't put it straight into here. It's kind of odd. Can we get a long piece that fits nicely? Not really. Uh, I think a 7 is the biggest one that'll actually let the pipe through there. Uh, let the fluid through. One, two, three, four. Where's this going? Okay. Uh, let's put a freebie over here. All right. And then this needs. Oh. It wasn't that this pipe was missing because this one wasn't doing anything either. I wonder if this would look a bit neater. We don't need that much lubricant storage, do we?
Okay. Let's place some uh, scaffolding up here. And we're going to want cosmic water. Which way should I do this? Probably like this, maybe? That should be fine. Actually, I guess if I... Oh, that's fine too. Except they'll have to crisscross if I do that. Well, I guess they'll have to crisscross regardless. Is that? That's the wrong one. Okay. Just want to drain the cosmic water that's in these pipes. Uh, but I've run out of 15ers. Give to me more pipes, please. I don't have any. That's a little bit surprising. Um, can I make some? Actually, yes. It literally just takes space pipe. Does this mean I should just bring... I guess it stacks better if you make the long pipes as well. Also, how does 8 become 15? Are we literally stretching it? Okay. Why doesn't this one a place? Cannot connect systems with different fluids. Cosmic water. Nothing. Inputs to cosmic water. Huh? Cosmic water. What? By the way, is there a way maybe by setting up a multiplayer game or so that you can have multiple characters in a safe so you can switch between Nalvis and space? Uh... Not to my knowledge, but the navigation satellite lets you do quite a lot. Um, as long as you've got everything you need in a robo network, you'll be able to build and configure uh, anything you need to. Save. Save. Oh, excuse me. So why am I not able to place this pipe? I can place this one. I can place this one. Why... Why does it think this would mix? Okay, that was really weird. I'm glad we've got a uh, pick a dolly. Oops. I guess it has to be this way. So.
so this isn't going to work. I'll just have to connect up like this. I still don't understand why it thought this was mixing fluids. I've had that happen a few times and I end up laying ghost pipe and let the bots lay it. Hmm, fair enough. Okay, so... Heavy oil... Heavy oil... That's unfortunate. Uh, it only took two cosmic water out of the system. <laughs> uh, I'll do nine tiles over here, I guess. That doesn't quite reach. Why don't we do a 3B over here? And then... 15 is until until we get our heavy oil seven is gonna touch this isn't it unfortunate I guess that's not too bad it's kind of consistent. One, two, three, four, five. Did we run out of fivers as well, or no? Not even close. So heavy oil is all getting consumed by lubricant. Um, maybe we could calm down with that for a moment. And just make sure it gets to here. Nice. Um, actually, now that I think about it, maybe I should have... Put some storage for the thermofluid just to make sure we don't overfill it so we don't have to do this little loop thing here i mean yeah i th think un unless we have a pump like going from the thermofluid to something like this um It's probably better just to have some storage for the thermofluid in the first place and limit the inputs based on that. Um, I could just put the storage here. That should probably be fine. And on our inserter that puts things, uh, physical objects in that we need for thermofluid. Apart from counting uh, read hand contents pulse, we also have an enabled condition that thermofluid has to be less than some amount. Is it okay if we... I don't think there's going to be a problem if we have the sushi belt sharing the same wire to tell us how much fluid we have. In fact, I'm sure that's not going to be a problem. Red wire goes this way. Cool. So everywhere we go, we should be able to see... Actually, I'm just going to add a little constant combinator. So we can tell very easily. Um, it'll have to be two constant combinators. One red, 
one green. Uh, green one is green signal. Actually, let's do this. Upgrade planner. Deconstruction planner. So, oh crap. Um, well, I forgot that that should be a pulse. And now we've got sort of a random count of red and green signals on the uh, sushi belt. But on the plus side, we can see very... Why did that stop? Oh, I see. Uh, we can see very easily that uh, all of these are connected properly. I do have a way to fix this without resetting the count of the items that are actually on the belt. It is called a pulse generator. And I don't know why my robot was switched off. Oh, that's probably why. We're going to need a lot of space pipe. Uh, so this basically converts a constant signal to a pulse, which is just one tick. Also, we've found our reason to not connect this to uh, the circuit wire for the sushi belt. So we need 727... Negative 727 green. 657 for deconstruction planner. And we're going to pass that through here for one tick. Oh, we're not going to do it that way. Let's do the green wire first. On and off. And I just doubled it, apparently. What? How? How is... Oh, it isn't... Wait, no. What? I don't understand. We're passing a negative signal for Upgrade Planner into here, which is the green wire, which is... Uh-oh. No, that should be fine. This this combinator was just here because it needs to be a one-way wire to this one. This is our counter. We're sending it a positive signal. Uh, no, a negative signal. So that should go down, right? I, I don't get it. Let's try it without the pulse generator. I'm just going to set this to 1. Uh, upgrade planner. And we should... Okay, so we're seeing that number increase, as we would expect. This is a pulse generator, right? Did I... No? I, I put it on the correct output. So the way this works is both of these receive a signal at the same time. One tick later, this one spits out the negative of that signal and feeds it to this thing. Uh, at the same time, this one is outputting a positive. Oh, I forgot this doesn't work with a negative. Okay, we have to change it to less than zero. And now we can't tell exactly how much... Um, Uh, exactly how much our value is, because Factorio just shows us 2.6k. But if I set this to 2.6k, uh, pulse it in, well, it needs to be negative 2.6k. I 
it should be close enough now at 35. So now it needs to be negative 35. Pulse. And it's gone. To remove the negative, uh, we need to give it a positive. So we change this back. I do realize that if I had just put it on the red wire for the negative value, that would have worked as well. But live and learn. 657. 657. Go. There it is. I've had that happen. Oh, right. Yep. Um, okay, cool. So we could actually just put a pump here. That would be easier. That fits quite well. And we're just going to read from one of these. I wonder if this would look a little bit better. Not really. And what's our output called? Thermofluid. Twenty-five degrees. So let's say it has to be less than half full for now. And I think we'll not worry about limiting items that actually go into this machine. Where are my blue inserters? Here we go. Alright, so this is taking off of the belt. Therefore, red wire. Uh, no enable, disable. Read hand contents pulse. And that's it. Easy enough. Now we need iron plate, copper plate, and sulfur on the belt. Um, we also need... Where is our sulfur? I thought it was on the outside of the belt. Edit. Oh, it's on the inside. Uh, we also need to make sure that it gets over here. I need space splitters. And I need to stop with the requests. Okay. Output priority left. And away you go. Cool. And now we've got 10 uh, sulfur on the belt. That looks about right. Alright, so once we get iron and copper here, we will have our thermofluid. Fantastic. Um, kind of want to fix this a little bit. And that can go back here. Cool. What's next? To be honest, I think the next thing is... I think we'll do this circuitry on the ground because I don't like how much room it's going to take up up here. Um, especially with the way we've already got this laid out. So we'll just send the contents of uh, each of these cargo landing pads. Oh. Bunch of items I didn't realize I dropped. Craftily hidden. Um, we'll just send this up to... Uh, down to Nalvis. And we'll do the math downstairs. Um, it's going to be a little bit more complicated with many items. 
I hope I can set it up so that we can just change a constant combinator, but I don't think so. I really doubt it's going to be that easy. Also, why are these set to... What's our input signals on this? I think this is connected to the wrong thing. Um, yeah, it definitely is. I don't see any reason why this would be connected to the main... Uh, the fact that I can't move that around is making it very difficult to see where things are connected. Okay, that's better. So this takes the input from what's in the cargo landing pad. Uh, is connected to the whitelist. Multiplies by negative one. Uh, each that's equal to one output, each negative one. So anything we don't have in here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this just got connected by mistake. And... What? Oh, is it because this isn't... Wait, what? Sulfur isn't on the whitelist over here. But we are putting sulfur on the belt. And... Here's our memory cell. And we're not accidentally setting the... What is going on with these filter inserters? Why do they keep pulsing? Oh. It keeps on and off saying uh, this thing over here. Rough data storage substrate. We've got like one. Okay. And then... Like, I, I can solve this problem just by adding sulfur to the whitelist for things that go on the belt. But... I'm curious, because that's not the way I fixed it up here. Or, this problem didn't even occur up here. Why is it we can put sulfur on this belt? Um... But data storage substrates, it doesn't work the same way. It's popping up on this filter, and I don't know why it's doing it periodically like this. Oh, it's probably because there's one data storage sub substrate on the belt. Every once in a little... every... every little while we get one data storage substrate, or something like that. Is this it? Polished data storage substrate. So that gets put on the belt. Now it's there. And then it immediately gets eaten by this. But why... Why are we not seeing filters for sulfur here, but we are for data storage substrate? We've got 166 sulfur on this belt. And it seems to be... It seems to work the same way. It, it's exactly the same wire. Um, exactly the same conditions on... On the piece of belt. 
neither of them are on this whitelist. Where do we actually get this green wire from? Oh, it's the red wire. Okay. Each less than or equal to 200 output each one. It is outputting sulfur. And over here we're outputting the negative 2 sulfur. I don't know why it has to be negative 2. Like, I, I would have thought negative 1 would make the difference, but it's possible that this being negative 2 is relevant. Um, let's remove sulfur. Whoops. That was like rocket something or other, right? It was the equivalent of space science. This thing. Satellite telemetry. Okay, so negative two. Nope, that doesn't seem to make a difference. I really don't know why I set it to negative two. Except it's not outputting that negative two sulfur. How are we getting the negative, uh, the input of sulfur to this thing? Is there another? Oh, is there sulfur in here? Is there literally one sulfur in here? Is that why? You're kidding. How did this happen? Are you telling me if I take out this one piece of sulfur? <laughs> What are the odds of that? How did we end up with exactly one sulfur in here and it made the difference to causing this to happen on this circuit? Okay, so effectively sulfur was on the whitelist, it just wasn't on this combinator. Good to know. Um... I don't think there's another way we could or should do it. Like, we need to have... We probably need to have uh, a value of 1 for everything that's allowed to be on the belt. Otherwise we're going to get the filter slot taken up when we don't have something. Well, that was different. Um, we may end up having to have quite a few constant combinators for this, but we'll see. Three constant combinators would be 60 different types of item on the belt, so it's probably not going to get that bad. Probably. So I guess we're back to trying to figure out how to uh, have a cargo rocket send lots of different items and dynamically uh, have a dynamic load based on what items we need. So I fear we're going to have to have two combinators per type of resource to get the number of stacks that we've got. Famous last words? Wait, which were my famous last words? Let's assume that we will have to do that for now. Um, and then... And then what?
we'll probably have to have a chain of like 500 minus this resource output remaining stacks and then remaining stacks minus this resource remain etc uh, etc et so it's probably going to look something like a yiplio thank you for the follow welcome welcome hope you're doing well so we're going to say something like uh 500 stacks minus iron plate Shwabalaba. thank you for the follow welcome welcome hope you're doing well uh output s for remaining stacks i guess or output e for empty I don't know. We'll see. And then it's going to be uh, E minus copper plate output E and they're basically going to be in a row which would this would probably be better Uh, minus steel, minus, I don't know, plastic. How many different things are we going to need on this belt? Wow, that is a lot of... Wait, we've got 649... Um, what is it called? Uh, machine learning data. For some reason we have 649 machine learning data. Probably because we are not putting an enable disable condition on this. Um, machine learning data less than 200. All right, that'll do it. I wasn't expecting that uh, that system to run away on us. Why is this not... Oh, our science output is full. Wait, what? Uh... Okay. <laughs> what do we do with junk data cards, anyway? Junk data card. Why does it... It's clearly called junk data card, but if I type more than junk data, it goes away. Okay, so it's kind of a waste product for various things. And right click, we can turn it into a blank data card, plus a broken data card, plus thermofluid. But only if we cool the thermofluid first, we can do the exact same thing, but at a different ratio. If we use cold thermofluid and it requires a supercomputer we don't have yet, um, this looks like it's exactly the same. Sometimes we get cryonite out of this one. Cryonite rod, junk data card, super cooled, thermofluid. Much better odds of getting a blank data card instead of a broken one. So the odds are, you, you get one or the other, a blank data card or a broken data card. And it also spits out some thermofluid. And the ratios get better depending on what tier of supercomputer you've got. And whether you shove some cryonite in there that you might lose as well. Okay. 
What does a broken data card do? I mean, besides be broken. Uh, I want to check what makes it. Oh, you can turn it into scrap. Wait, is that it? Yep. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. We know what to do with scrap. So we need another computer. Um, I don't think we've got one lying around. It's made in a space manufactory, and it's fairly straightforward. Um, whoops. Super computer. LDS. And space. Whoops. Okay. We've got our supercomputer. We need to set it to data formatting. Uh, this makes hot thermofluid, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Negative 10 degrees. And that is what we need. Can we make this work over here? think so. Wait. Why is that connected like that? It's kind of weird. All right. Full thermo fluid. get this over here and then we give it junk data uh, yeah junk data cards and it outputs regular thermo fluid so we need this to oh maybe I should have oh, this will this will be fine Okay. I'll just put some chests here for now. Actually, I'll put some filter inserters. Uh, we only need two. Data formatting. Blank data card and broken data card. Okay, and then uh, filter this stuff. And this one goes over here. And that should be it. I'm back after two hours. Did T Hacks die or did he fail miserably? Um uh, wait, why would I die? Also, depending on what we're talking about, failing, maybe. Okay. Can I maybe get rid of Get rid of this. Uh, that's going to take a few steps. Can I make some more room? Not really. Oh, I see. Uh, 
Yeah, that's only going to take a few more clicks. But it would go a lot faster if I do something like this. There we go. Okay. Just asking if there was something noteworthy. Uh, well, we've been designing uh, a cool wall with separate robo networks. And I just about finished it, except for the clever circuit stuff that shares things between the robo networks. Um, I'm very sad to realize I will probably need to use belts to get the robots to uh, the RoboPort. Other than that, it's looking pretty cool. I also added a experiment that we're going to use here where once the accumulator drops below 80%, which is a little bit below what it hits just during the night, um, and the power switches switch on. We're also going to close these three gates, which is probably going to confuse the biters at just the right time, hopefully. Nice new robot wall. Yes, indeed. That's what we talked about in Discord. Yeah, I know two ways of how to seed new robot segments with Bloodshy Bots. Are you telling me there's a way to do this without... Um, is there a way for me to insert a bot over here and get it into this RoboPort without belting it over? Is the other way using a train? Because <laughs> that's going to be a problem as well. I suppose... You know what? I might not hate it if I... If I had a train stop here, and we can insert things straight into storage here, and we could actually insert bots directly into the robot robo port from the train network, and we'd end, but we'd end up with like a million uh, train stops, which I wouldn't necessarily be okay with. I do it by placing a robo port in between the two networks, making them one, and later on I just delete it. Uh, so it's not fully automated. It is less ugly though. It's manual work, but it's not that often that I extend the network. Yeah. Hmm. Look at that science go. Speaking of science, Oh, no. Uh, how have we ended up with so much more purple and yellow than the other ones? I can't send a science rocket here. Not, not the way it is with the even ratios of each uh, science pack. Well... We're basically trying to design a system that reacts to what you've got right now. I mean, we did it already with uh, coal and ice, except that one's a little bit simpler. Um, basically, we read how many stacks of each resource we've got stored in this thing, and our top priority is to send a certain amount of ice. Um, and then after that we fill it with coal. Since coal get u gets used more quickly. Um, I may have miscalculated something because we've run out of ice. Oh, we do have... Nope, no we don't. I lied. Um... I guess I didn't account for ice being used or other things. So 
So now we've got less than 500 uh, storage available for ice. Uh, for anything, for that matter. And we're not sending more ice. Hmm. That's a problem. There's a third way mod recursive blueprint comes to mind, which could make it all automated. Dealer's choice. Other way is the belt, but it will be used only once, and then it will just be there doing nothing. And if it has to be deleted manually, it's not much different to add and later remove the RoboPort. Well, if it is there, you could remotely remove it. And the whole wall would automatically build itself. Uh, okay. I don't know if this problem goes away if... If I aim for, like, 50-50 stacks of ice and coal. Um, in fact, I'm sure it doesn't, because... If we get 250 stacks of ice and uh, 250 stacks of coal, and then we use one a lot faster than the other. We could end up with this situation again. We've only got an extra, like, 110 storage slots. We're going to need a smarter system than this. It would have worked if there was nothing else consuming water. Um, because we're sending up... Well, no. I think we would ultimately end up with too much ice. I don't want to... I, I really don't want to have a single cargo landing pad for every bloody resource. Um, although at this point it's really starting to look attractive. We could even put the... Um, uh, the cargo rocket sections and the capsules on the sushi belt and have them all return to a cargo rocket silo very easily. It's going to take a lot of cargo landing pads, but it's going to be way easier if we do that. Oh boy. But it would be cool if we could send like a dozen different resources in this thing and automatically figure out what we need to send in the rocket, and so on. There's just not that much storage space, and it's very easy to... Like, because there's, like, one point... Uh... What is it? 20%? 1.2-ish? Uh, times a cargo rocket storage space here. We have to be consuming everything at nearly exactly... We have to be consuming everything at pretty close to the ratio that we're sending it up in the first place, or we have to send a fairly empty cargo rocket. If we were okay with sending not a full cargo rocket, then we could definitely, like, fix this pretty, pretty easily. Maybe I'll just default to that. I mean, we do have infinite resources, and our main bus base actually stopped moving, um, almost entirely. You can see a bit of motion here for steel. How did this happen? But... I don't like uh, wasting, like, rocket parts, but it really doesn't matter. At least not in this game. 
not in space exploration. But it's an interesting uh, challenge to try to figure out how we could automatically send up resources with full cargo rocket and not end up having problems. I think the answer is honestly just lots and lots of storage. If we had like, um, well, how many slots is this? 500 is, uh, it's a bit more than 10 chests, right? This is nine. Uh, 48 times nine is 432 stacks. So this is already significantly more than a single cargo landing pad. But we would have to completely change the layout of this. We could do everything with a single cargo landing pad and a filtered output as long as we have lots of storage like uh well probably just two rows of chests honestly do it kind of like uh Yeah, I think that's going to be a better system. Is it okay if we sent... Oh no, it's definitely not okay. <laughs> uh, we definitely don't want to send two rockets to one of these cargo landing pads at the same time. And if we had, like, multiple cargo landing pads, like two of them that went to all the same filtered storage, uh, filtered outputs and then storage systems. Um, we just want to be very careful about, like we would have to not send a rocket unless there's room for two rockets of storage for that item. I guess we could do that pretty easily actually. Nice pipe bus, thank you. I used to have one cargo landing pad on previous map. I'm going multiple pads this time. I think it's worthy. Yeah, it definitely makes it a lot easier if we just use one cargo landing pad for each resource. Um, like, way, way, way easier. It's also way more throughput um, as well if you're trying to do a high throughput base. It was simple before, I had it surrounded by active provider chests and it outputted to them all around. Bots distributed items to uh, proper chests from where it was belted, but I'll go with dedicated landing pads for multiple items and it will be belted. Hmm. I think I would like to... I'm really surprised how quickly we ran into a problem with this setup, but I didn't account for just how much water uh, would get consumed by this system. In fact, I didn't account for any water getting consumed by anything else at any significant pace. Uh, ice goes a really long way in this system over here. Um, but obviously we ran out. Also, there's the bot attrition thing. Not that it's a problem, but it's still a waste. Yeah. I hate to have to tear up everything I designed over here, but it's it's going to happen. It's a little disappointing. But I think what we'll end up with is... Uh, at least one cargo landing pad... Uh, filtered outputs. Uh, 
we need to know everything that's in storage. Hmm. How many inserters can we fit alongside this? It's 10, isn't it? No, it's 9. It's 9 in every direction. Okay, so 4 on each side means 2 blue belts, or 2 space belts rather. Is that all in our Robocot range? Yep. And then... Also think about insert a throughput. Yeah, four is enough to saturate a belt. Uh, well, it might not quite be enough with a stack size of eight, but I'm sticking with it. And then we need the cascade of uh, splitters, probably going the other way because otherwise they'll run into each other. We need one for every resource. Um, so like iron plate, copper plate, steel, we could probably have, oh I forgot this only reaches five tiles, that's really not great. I guess it's not a problem though. Right, so that goes... that's not right. Is it? No. No, that's no good at all. It has to be repeatable. It's not gonna be repeatable. Probably get more throughput this way. Uh, yeah, it should do um, 90 items per second, assuming the inserters can do that. Is there... Is there no way to have this work with a repeating pattern? It might have to take up more space. Uh, like this. Okay, that's not too bad. It's gonna get pretty uh, space expensive, depending on how many different items we uh, pick up from here, though. So let's suppose that this one... Well, maybe we'll just do the big four from the, from here. In which case, we wouldn't need that splitter in particular. Um, two rows of nine chests is... more than enough. Well, I, I want, like... Let's see. If we accidentally send two rockets at a time, somehow... I, I would love to be able to have multiple launch pads loading at the same time, getting ready to send the stuff here, but if we're using the bots for all of it, probably bottleneck on the bots anyway. Um... Nine of these chests is not enough for, for a full load. How much would it take? Um, 50 divided by 48. What? Oh, 500 divided by 48 is 
ten and a half. Eleven is not a very good number. Maybe two rows of six. And then... I might even put filter inserters here just to illustrate that this is where iron goes. Maybe not. Over here we'll have copper. Steel. This is already getting pretty big. Landing pad also holds a bit more than a rocket, yeah. Although it's rather large. I have considered abusing landing pads as giant containers. You can do eight full blue belts. I think max is ten full blue belts. The full load isn't what the pad can hold, it's what the rocket sends up, minus the losses. Yeah. Oh yeah, I completely forgot that we randomly lose some items as well. Which is one more reason you can't just, even if you could, set the perfect ratio for like ice to coal, for example, um, for this system here. It does not. It waits for space in the destination. Does rocket actually shoot if destination doesn't have enough space? Oh. Wait, really? So I didn't have to do... I didn't have to do the circuit where we figure out if there's empty slots before we send the green signal to the rocket? Well, we can prove it right now. Um, this thing is full. Let's do a save. And we'll change this to... Uh, instead of green signal and cargo full, it's just going to be cargo full. Also, that's going to mess us up even more. We just saved. It's fine. Uh, launch on cargo full. Okay. Does it wait for 500 stacks to be available, though? Or... Will it, will it make sure it doesn't launch, will it make sure it doesn't waste like the extra, um, cargo rocket sections and maybe the space capsule is what I'm trying to figure out. Automated rockets never launch to an occupied pad, manual launch can of course. I believe it only launches if the cargo pad is actually empty, not 100% sure. Okay, we can run a little experiment here. Um, if we fill this with exactly 110 slots. Actually, I could probably, probably do it with these uh, inserters right here, right? It's going to take a few clicks. Whoops. Okay, that's going to be easier. Why did it drop over here? What's that for? Best part of Factorio, one small detail changes the whole concept. Yeah. Uh, whether or not there was any point to making that part of the circuit, we're about to find out. It's a little bit humid here, and my mouse does not have the most fluid movement over the desk, but we'll manage. Oops. 
There was another two over here, wasn't there? How many is this? Uh, 110. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to change the name of this one to Nalvis Orbit Coal and Water. I presume you can give them the same names, just like with train stations, right? Go. And are you going to send... No? If I start removing filter inserters from here, and it launches, it's either waiting for room for the extra stuff, or it's not going to send it to this launch pad. Now this... Oh, it changed it to number two. Okay, never mind. I don't know why this one became number two. Now this orbit coal and water. There's only one of them. I mean... So they do have the same name. How am I supposed to distinguish which one is number one and number two if this happens? It says needing to be unloaded and waiting for empty launch pad. Why does it say that? Normal. Waiting for available empty landing pad. Okay. But what what is with this two? Is that going to mess us up or... Oh, it's saying there's two of them. Okay. Alright. So I think this is... I, I have my fingers crossed here that... Um, some of that circuit logic we didn't have to worry about. I'm going to just keep removing a few stack inserters at a time. Waiting for available empty landing pad. Wait, does it actually have to be empty? Surely not. Alright, so this is now 90. Wait, if it's never going to launch automatically unless the landing pad is completely empty, then this whole thing was a complete waste of time. Oh no. Waiting for available empty landing pad. If that's not enough room for the extra stuff, I don't know what is. Waiting for available empty landing pad. Let's pick up all of this. And away it goes. So we pretty much have no choice but to do this the simple way. Or... Oh, a less complicated way, at least. Empty, empty. Yeah. It has to be empty. With rocket recovery at 20, you get 500 cargo, 100 rocket parts, and one capsule. That's why the pads are 610. Yeah, but it doesn't, like, calculate how many uh, slots it needs. Okay. Um... Rather than do all of this mess, I think we're going to do the obvious thing and just have each cargo landing pad directly next to the sushi. Yeah, 
will have circuitry that counts what it puts onto the sushi belt. Uh, well, well, we'll need a bit of smart stuff like this to set the filters for what we're putting on the sushi belt. But other than that, well, I guess it, I guess it has to be exactly this, but bell deck. Thank you very much for the gifted sub. Enjoy it, uh, Tura. Much appreciated, Veldak. Again, thank you. The two means there's two pads, yes. Sorry, I was kind of caught up figuring that stuff out myself. So... Yeah. I'm kind of confused. No, we're, we're just gonna we're gonna need something like this. The the memory cell and the times negative one is gonna have to be central, and everything else is gonna have to be on a uh, uh, cargo landing pad basis. I think. Well, well, thank you, Veldak. Yes, thank you, Veldak, very much indeed. Uh, it's always very humbling and appreciated when you'll want to throw something in the tip jar. Thank you. So I think we're just... I, I wonder how much circuitry we can share between um, cargo landing pads if we have, like, a line of these and uh excuse me if we have a line of them and have the circuit wire sort of shared between some of them these two combinators would have to be mirrored over here the um this has to be linked to the counter, each less than 200 output, each one. Now I'm pretty sure everything here, except for maybe two combinators, is going to have to be repeated for each cargo landing pad. We'll put the cargo landing pads directly in front of the sushi belts. We're just going to do one resource per um, per cargo landing pad. We're not going to need signal transmitters. We're not going to need any clever circuitry to figure out how many stacks we've got of each and how many slots are empty. And it makes me a little bit sad, to be honest. Um... But it was going to be a very difficult thing to get working properly. And as for this stuff, we can put it on the sushi belt and we'll have it um, return to our car a cargo rocket silo. That's going to be pretty simple. All right, I guess we're removing all of this stuff. Best laid plans. Um, I need some more room in my inventory. There we go. No, no, I thank you for gifting me new, lo new knowledge regarding launching pads and rockets. Well, you're welcome. Are you going to have a long line of pads? Yes. I'm thinking about alignment and resource counts. Don't know yet if it will do eight belts per pad or perhaps only two. The one thing I am wondering a bit about how I'm going to lay out... Oh, I should load this game where we don't have even more difficult to deal with resources up here. 
Um, we could still have, like, maybe for science, we'll do a shared rocket, because that is a lot of science. And in that case, we will need a storage system. Uh, how many types of science do we have? Currently, we have one, two, three, four, five, six that we need to send up. So that's not going to be a problem. This is actually going to be pretty straightforward. Um, stack filters, different types of science. Different types of science. Uh, make sure there's more than a cargo landing pad worth of storage for each type of science. Um, so 12 times 48 is 576. Good. And you could send, you could send just a uh, red science here, like one type of science at a time. And, or you could, whoops. Whoops. And or you could calculate it so that you could send um, uh, multiple types of science at the same time. That's pretty straightforward. In fact, maybe we can save a few cargo landing pads if we do it this way. So, wait, no, this is only 48 times 2. This is only 96. Um, we need 11 chests in a row here. I think that's it. That's 9. 528. Okay, two more. That's, that's pretty long. Um, that, that is not short. It's not exactly a pretty sight. Um, well, it is six times, it, it is storage for six different resources for... Uh, more than a cargo landing, uh, more than a cargo rocket each, but still. I don't think that is very pretty. Wrong? You need no chests? Landing pad is a chest. <laughs> Except we need to have 500 stacks of storage for each resource. Let's say I have rocket ready, full of science to launch. It will take less than a minute from signal to delivery. If you consume only one belt, let output one belt. And it can sit in a pad as a huge chest. I wonder if it wouldn't be just easier to make the regular science in space, knowing how slow the research goes in SE. That's a good point. I don't know. I think we need... No, it definitely... It's definitely on a lot more dense when you... Uh, when you put it into actual science packs. I mean, 30 rail plus an electric furnace plus productivity modules. And that's not talking about break it in, breaking it into its uh, component parts to begin with. Stone, iron, copper, petroleum, coal. Yeah. 
it's definitely a lot more dense to send it up as science. Definitely need less rockets if you launch the actual science packs. Plus, nothing in space beside the labs can use productivity modules. That's a good point. So you lose quite a bit there, yeah. I don't think I want to do something like this. Um, but the alternative is six different pads for science. But, I mean, considering this actually... Let's count. One... Two, it's like two and a half almost. It almost takes up t the space of two and a half pads. Uh, not counting, no, not even thinking about all the inserters um, and chests and how friggin' ugly it looks. Um, I think for science we might actually have to do. Ugh, <laughs> oh, that hurts. I think you're kind of supposed to play space exploration with um, modded containers. This is kind of crazy. But it'll be a much cleaner solution to simply have uh, one cargo landing pad for each type of science. That's just six of them. I mean, that takes up a lot of space. A, a lot, a lot of space. I almost think this is better now, actually. In fact, I kind of do think it's better. I don't like either of these, to be clear. But we could do something like this. And then have our labs up here. I organized my thoughts. You only need a big uh, buffer big enough to account for launching the launching time of the rocket. Uh, what do you mean by the launching time? Are we assuming a constant consumption of resources? We can't automatically send a rocket before there's room for everything though anyway. Okay. I'll definitely leave that circuitry in place um, because I'll need to refer to it. I'll probably spend some time in sandbox playing with all this, uh, playing with these ideas before the stream tomorrow. There's no storage left. Oh. Didn't realize the RoboPorts came all the way down here. Already. I assume you always have a rocket ready to launch. So once cargo landing pad is ready... Uh, is ready, there's no science until... The rocket lands. Launching time. That's the time it needs to be accounted for. It's like 10 seconds or something. Meaning the amount of buffer chests. I mean, if you're manually sending it early. You can't automatically send a rocket up when there isn't room uh, in the cargo landing pad is the main thing there. I'm getting a little bit tired of those fighter alerts, so let's turn them off. I will take a quick tour of Nalvis just to make sure the world hasn't ended. Nope, everything seems to be fine. I'll probably spend some time 
in sandbox uh, working on this wall as well. Let's make a blueprint of it just for the moment. Military. I, I do like where this is going, except for the whole having to belt the bots to the Roboport thing. But it's pretty cheap if you use Yellow Belt. Also, if there's going to be a single trash train uh, train stop for an entire wall, we're going to need a belt taking unwanted items all the way back. It's either that or having a train stop for every single wall section, which... I don't know, um, maybe there's nothing wrong with that, or maybe having an absolutely ludicrous number of train stops is going to be bad for UPS or something. Uh, maybe your, maybe your UPS experts can chime in on that one. Worst case scenario of having to buffer a 100k science pack of one individual color, yeah. Hundred K signs. That is a lot. But yeah, I think I do like the idea of a shared um a shared cargo landing pad for science, and we can do the clever as long as we have more than a cargo landing pad of storage outside of the pad for each science pack, um, then we can do the clever stuff that we did over here. I shouldn't have deleted it. Um, well, I've got enough over here to recreate it anyway, or I could spam undo. Um, but it's not that difficult for me. I might move this over a few tiles. Something like this. Nice and neat. Yeah, I think we will do it for science. And probably for everything else we'll just have to have a single cargo landing pad for each resource. Or maybe... Maybe we should use delivery cannons for everything that we can. Everything that we can use delivery cannons for, that is one less um, cargo landing pad. Taking up a lot of space and all of that. With six colors delivered, it might be just one-sixth of 100k. What do you mean? So 84 stacks. Yeah, well, the total storage outside of the cargo landing pad... Oops. The total storage for each resource is greater than 500 stacks. Um... Oh, hang on. So if we go through lots and lots of signs without using, let's say, military signs... Just how bad are some of the different ratios? Okay, there's lots of these that aren't using yellow and purple, but red, green, and blue, that's... I feel like that's not going to be a problem. If we run out of red only, we can still send a rocket. Yeah, no, it should be fine no matter what. Because we can actually run out of one type of science pack and then send only that science pack. Which is sort of the main problem. Military won't get loaded on Nalvis into rocket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we read what's in here, we use a transmitter, we do some logic, um, and we load, we dynamically load our rocket 
uh, based on that. We could probably only have a single receiver over here for many different resources. Um, well, no, because we can't automatically change the destination. So we'll probably uh, we'll probably have to have a single cargo rocket silo uh, for every different name of landing pad. Yeah, the ratio can be like one to ten in one direction or ten to one in the other direction, but for each different name for the cargo landing pads, we need at least one. Uh, dedicated rocket silo. On average it works, but if I do bad research queue, might get into trouble. I'll go with less storage on my map. I'll go with average case where I don't ignore one science, and I'll switch appropriately. If you get SE running at 60 SPM, you're a big boy. <laughs> so don't worry too much about simple sciences. Yeah, I'm not really worried that much about the throughput. I just want to set up, like, cool systems that will automatically do everything. As long as the throughput isn't terrible. Hence, here we have a sushi belt. Alright, that's just about going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I do believe Mucky said he'd be streaming, so we'll almost definitely be raiding Mucky. Yep, there he is. Thank you all for watching, do take care, and I'll see you next time. Uh, same time tomorrow, unless something happens. Uh, check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have questions, suggestions, or if there's anything broken, by all means let me know. And take care, Veldak. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, T-Hacks, thank you so much for the raid, mate. How did the rest of your stream go? I hope you had a good one. So I don't intend to join those north-south ones up hey, yet. Hey, Mucky, you're a moron. <laughs>